This episode is sponsored by Wacom, Wacom Wacom.com. As a reminder, one lucky artist who participated in this episode will receive a Wacom Cintiq Pro 13. And that's pretty damn cool. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Face the Truth. Uh, this week, um, my guest is a very important person to me, and uh, you know we spent a lot of time together. Uh, he's basically Uncle Grieger to my kids. Comes to uh, Christmas with my family. We've had Thanksgiving together. He's uh, one of the sweetest people that I know. He's kind of known, in a way, in the caricature world, to be very aggressive and some people perceive him as kind of an angry, kind of violent or brutish person. But the truth is, is he is probably the sweetest person that I know. Um, He's someone that I can always depend on. Uh, There's been times in my life that have been really rough and he shows up right away. And, you know, he's he's just the kind of person that when my daughter had a seizure, he shows up with flowers and teddy bears for her. He, uh came to her, to her birthday and did a painting for her. Um, he's just one of the most thoughtful people I know. Um, he's also, besides the fact that he's a, an insanely talented artist, and I think part of, part of that is because of how sensitive he is. He's very thoughtful, and he's very aware of a lot more than I think a lot of people are. That's just my opinion. But besides the fact that he's an amazing artist, he's also an amazing teacher. His school in Chicago is... Just um, one of the best art schools, I think, in Chicago. It's, you know, we're going to talk about it a little bit in the podcast, but um, I'll put the link up as well. At the very end of the podcast, I'll have a link for his school. It's, it's hands down, I think, the best art school in Chicago. If you are wanting to learn how to, to draw and paint like a master, um, very realistic, how to understand light and shadow, how to basically have an understanding of values and, and color harmony, you know, soft edges, etc. It's the best school. And he's a great teacher. He's very patient. He spends a lot of time working with students. So, so yeah, if you're in Chicago area, I highly re- recommend if you're a serious artist, if you're serious about learning, about growing, about becoming a better artist, it's the best place to, to, to learn, you know, hands down. There's no question about this. So anyways, um, I don't need to go on and on. You know, I love him. I love him like a brother. He's an amazing person. Oh, and also his niece and nephew, Zlata and Ivan, um, they did drawings of Grigor for the podcast, but unfortunately I didn't get them until after we already recorded our talk. So this is a drawing by Zlata, who is 10, I believe. And this is a drawing by Ivan. Pretty awesome. So with great privilege, I present to you my best bud, Grigor Eftimov. <laughs> Cool. All right. Well, it's already rolling, so we're we're already in the game. So how you feel? You ready to do this? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. All right. So um, everybody, this is my my buddy Grigor, and um, and uh, we're in his studio. This is awesome. I wanted to come here because his studio is so damn cool. Um, I'm gonna take some pictures and and stuff, some video, to uh, to kind of show a little bit. I'll edit it into the video, but um, yeah, this is your place, man. Why don't we just start off? Just, um, uh, just talk about a little bit, you know. I mean, first of all, I guess, I, 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 I we're we're such good friends that I feel like I know almost everything about you already. Yeah. Um, practically a brother. You were in my wedding. Um, my your uncle Grieger to my, to my daughters. <laughs> um, so I have I have a lot of questions from fans because I think. That'll, that'll help uh, give us something okay. to talk about, you know, art-wise. But um, I guess what I would just start off everything with, just real quick, is, you know, we met, like, what, 17, 18 years ago, at least? Yeah, I think uh, it was just a random event, actually. Yeah. And it was the Chicago Caricature Network or something, I think. I think it was Donovan who put it together. or I, can't remember, I don't remember who it was who put it together, but... Yeah. Um, yeah, that's when I met you, and uh, it was, I think Gary was there, I met you there, my friend Jesse was there. We had a yeah. number of uh, sort of friends, mutual friends now, but we just... Uh, you know, yeah, it was funny because um, at the time, I was I was basically just getting started. Yeah. Um, you know, doing small, like, 
personal kind of commissions and stuff like that. And um, I didn't know very many other caricature artists in in Chicago. And and I'll never forget well, the moment I met you. You come, you know, you come in there and you've got like you had a backpack. <laughs> and um, and uh, you, I showed you some of my work. I had like a little folder that had some of my work in it. Very nice, professional. <laughs> uh, and you were looking through. You're like, oh, it's pretty cool, dude. Pretty nice. And you're like, I like your style. You, you know, and whatever. And I was like, oh, thanks. I had no idea what your work was like. And you're, you're, I said, did you bring any work with? And you're like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah you know, I got a couple things. And uh-huh. you like open up the your backpack and you literally pulled out a crumpled up shitty ass piece of paper. It was Car- Carmen Diaz. It Cameron Diaz. Yeah, it was a, it was a Cameron yeah. Diaz yeah. drawing on it. And I was like, what the? It, it was one of the best caricatures I have ever seen. Um, spot on likeness, amazing exaggeration, the the pencil li- line work, the cross hatching. I was like, this is freaking insane. And you're like, oh, I got another one too. And you pull another one, ripped up, like you didn't care about it at all. And, yeah. And that was my first. That was my introduction to to Grieger. It's like, oh yeah, I draw shit and I'm really good at it. Uh, <laughs> let's check it out. <laughs> well, well, and we've been friends ever since, basically. Yeah. At, at, the, t- <laughs> at the time, I was, um, you know. At the time, there was no like social media. There was no, yeah. you know, I, you know, there was no way to communicate with other artists unless you like just ran into them at a park. And my earliest experiences of caricature art was just that, like, going to like Six Flags and mm-hmm. just seeing like this magic behold in front of me. And I, did, I was like, I could never do that. But uh, I did that basically just to supplement schooling. And so when I met you, I was in my, I just I had just started going to school in, in an atelier. So I was doing like classical realism. So I was really all about like, uh, you know, learning how to draw and, and paint better. That was really it, you mm-hmm. know, and just pushing that as far as I could and the caricature thing, the exaggeration thing, all that stuff. That was just really for fun and, you know, just income to sort of supplement what I really wanted to do, you know. Mm-hmm. So. And what's funny about that is that you've you've since then have developed quite a reputation for your caricature work. <laughs> a lot of caricature artists all around the world think of you as this great caricature artist this awesome exaggerate but but that was and you are and you do love it and you're 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 really good at it but it, it's never been like hey i'm a care it's never been like your identity you, yeah. you used it to make money to get yourself through college basically yeah yeah it was just, it was just <laughs> i mean fun. i mean yeah. even even in 2015 yeah. what well, i had to uh, I drag your ass to the <laughs> to the isca convention yeah because i was speaking there and i wanted someone to hang out with and i'm like dude just compete have fun and of course, you uh, you were like, ah, I don't know. You were like, kind of like, I don't know if I'm, yeah, if I'm gonna, you know, I don't know if I want to do it. And but the the moment you got there, you start sketching people right away, and and then you you fucking won the whole thing. Yeah, well, <laughs> that was unexpected. It was, un- it was un- awesome though. Yeah, you know, again, the whole character thing to me was always. Um, it, it's it started off really is is it's kind of weird because, I really. Re- resisted caricature my first year and it was because I wanted to study fine art and I wanted to study like classical painting and drawing and to me caricature was again it was just like a good source of income but it wasn't until like my second year that I realized um, that I I couldn't just give people what they wanted and I realized that like if I'm gonna spend 12 12 hours a day in the same place I'd rather, if I'm going to make money regardless, why be miserable doing it, you know? Yeah. And so, you know, I, I um, you know, there was really no one to sort of like kind of lean on in a way, I guess you could say. And I didn't know what I was doing. And a lot of it was very ex- like exploratory. And half the time, half the time, it, it felt like I was lashing out in a sense uh, in my response to like, you know, I can't make people happy. I might as well just make myself happy in a way. You know, it's kind of selfish in the beginning, but <laughs> uh, I noticed that a lot of the other artists sort of followed suit. And what happened is we had a good group of people, a good group of artists that sort of went their own path, their own way of, of drawing a caricature. And the way I was taught and the way other people were taught was by Gary Fosen. And he, you know, he brought us on board and um, basically showed us his method. And, you know... <coughs> I, it was a good stepping stone, but definitely broke away from that. You know, it wasn't until I saw like, you know, I've mentioned before, maybe, maybe people know, maybe people don't, but Ed Steckley to this day, like I blame him. Yeah. So when I saw Ed Steckley draw, my brain just exploded. I was like, you can do that. Yeah. I'm like, what's going on? What am I missing here? You know? 
and I was already trying things and I just saw how like fierce and fearless it was and I saw the reaction and I just felt like man this is exciting this is what I think character should be up until that point I was very I was very timid I was kind of afraid you know I didn't want to like hurt people <coughs> you know that sort of thing but you know over time you realize it's not even about that you know y you realize that it's more about just taking an opportunity and just r really making a piece of art and you know interacting with the general public and I think that's a f few times that you can actually do that think about it you know there's always a middleman if you do like commercial work there's always like someone dictating to you what to do you know mm -hmm. in this case people come to you literally to you say I like the way you draw or I like the way you exaggerate or you know sometimes it's a surprise <coughs> you don't know but you know it's a it's a definitely a, a great experience and after that you definitely you know you definitely go a thicker skin mm -hmm. uh, you know that's one thing for sure I was uh, the weirdest thing is you get these artists who are very introverted they're always indoors and if you can make it through one summer you're, you're okay you know I didn't think I was afraid that was my biggest fear it's like you know like confronting people talking to people uh, you know what am I going to do you know how am I going to manage that yeah I, I remember um, I remember when uh, when we first met and um, you were you'd show me all these drawings that were rejected and you were you were almost celebrating in a way like <laughs> like I got like five rejects today and then you, you would take photos of them you'd show me and they were <laughs> the funniest uh, drawings because like for me when I saw them I was like I, hmm I wonder why they didn't yeah. want that one yeah well <laughs> you know because you, you like yeah, you, destroyed yeah. them <laughs> well you, you draw so much you, you're it's sitting so there funny. yeah you're sitting there like um, when it's really busy, you know, you're sitting there and there's, there's just such a large volume of people that um, you're going to run into someone that's <coughs> not going to be happy. But also, not just that, you get t I get tired of drawing the same face. You start seeing repeating shapes. You start seeing yeah. repeating things. You know, like, you know, everyone wants to be an individual, but, like, you're surprised. Everyone's, like, same hairstyle, same look, you know. They all look like they're friends or whatever. And you, you get kind of tired of this. You start pushing. You start you start experimenting. You take opportunities. You take risks. And really, it's for my own amusement, you know, <laughs> to be honest. But like I like I said, you know, it's an opportunity to sort of, uh, as Gary would say, celebrate. Yeah. You know, and it it it, it sort of like got my mind engaged. You know, uh, you know, all I needed was some caffeine, a little bit of sleep. <laughs> And that was it, you know, get the right face going. Uh, I remember, you know, we work five days a week, 12 hours a day. So the first thing we would do is just, the first person that would come in, we would just set the tone. And what I mean by that is like, instead of being afraid, it's just like, do what you're gonna do from the beginning. So people don't have a surprise. Yeah. So this is some advice for people, I guess, who are uh, uh, doing live caricature. If you wanna do what you wanna do, just do it right from the beginning. Don't do not try to please them just please yourself the right person will come along and the thing is like let's just say that first person yeah. doesn't like it well there will be plenty of people that will and they'll sit for you and that's what i've learned i've learned that there's you know um you can't please everyone what wasn't there times um I th if i remember correctly you told me how uh you would purposely do the most cutest gentle <laughs> high quality drawing of someone where people are like whoa and then all of a sudden you'd get a line people are like that's so nice so and you cute. know so cute and everything and then the next person you know would go down there and you would just slaughter them well <laughs> i mean look you know you you, you you're like it's, a, it's like fishing it's like yeah well, you're like a you know you're like a kid in the playground you're experimenting yeah. you're poking around and you want to see what people <laughs> react to and so yeah like the, but sometimes kids are cute and you happen to get a cute kid that's cute and you exaggerate yeah. them you know, it's your impression. Yeah. You know, so, so the feeling. thing, the thing is, that I think people don't understand. Like, not I'm not gonna draw you cute if you're not cute. You know what I mean? That, <laughs> that's the part that I don't. That's the problem with people. Like, they don't understand. Like, if you paid attention to the drawing and you paid attention to the person I'm drawing, you can yeah. see that they're cute. So, unless you're like a six year old little girl, and you're <clears> cute, I, I don't rec maybe wait for someone that's, you know, a little bit more mature. See how they handle it, see how they take it, see how I do it, you know. But again, this is, you know, I, I've been so, it's been such a long time since, I, since I've done theme park caricature, yet it's such a it, lasting impression on me. It's a crazy, it's a weird thing. It's one of the best experiences I've ever had. 
And uh, what I mean by that is just uh, you as an artist developing. It's one of the, you know, Gary, and I keep bringing up Gary because he's like, you know, you can never, you can never be star, you can never starve. You always have a job. You can always like um, sketch someone. You know, you give, give you five minutes, you can sketch someone's portrait, be it exaggerated or not exaggerated. You can get a likeness. That's, that's pretty much the term I like to say. I don't want to say portrait. I don't want to say caricature because to me, portraiture, caricature, you know, from one end to the other end, to me, it's all kind of the same. It's you're getting, you're capturing the likeness, you're capturing a light, uh, an essence, you're capturing mm -hmm. a representation. Yeah. You know, you're illustrating a representation. You're portraying mm -hmm. someone, either on one end or the other end, or a little bit of both, or very abstract. But to me, it's kind of like interchangeable. You know, it just depends on how I feel. Yeah, that's a really that's a really good point. I mean, I always look at it as, like, like I, I, caricature. I think is kind of confusing for for a lot of people. Um, not not caricature artists, but like people in general. And like, I always try to explain to people that it's 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 very much like impressionism. Yes. You know, it's it's basically, um, you know, I don't I don't have a formula or a set way that I do it. Um, sometimes I start with the chin. Sometimes I start, you know, with the whole shape, or sometimes I go from the inside yeah. out. It, yeah. It's it's all about how I feel about the person, um, and it, it depends on, you know, obviously if, if it's for like an editorial thing, yeah. Um, and I have it's for a, a, a it's for a, a boss of some sort, you know, I have to do it for somebody else. Yeah. Um, that kind of plays into it as well, like how far you push things and that mm -hmm. sort of thing. But ultimately. Yeah, some some caricatures end up feeling very portrait like, and some just just from the first mark have a life of their own. Like they yeah. just, you, it's like you're just going with the flow. And wow, look at what I just did. Yeah, and th that's that's where it's fun. Yeah, it, it's funny when you say the first mark. Uh, you could tell usually uh, for well for me back then, I could tell from the first mark that I make if it's wrong. It's a weird, it's a, it, it was just that sort of innate feeling you get after doing it so long. You know it's not going to go in the right direction. It just doesn't feel right. So you just like yeah. fold it, toss it. And uh, it, because it's just your, um, maybe, maybe your impression may change at the last moment or maybe it wasn't what you thought it was. And that's a really important thing is like your, yeah, like you said, your impression. Um, you know, it, that's the one thing that people have to kind of trust. You know, is your impression, especially if you're doing caricatures, if you, you know, if the feeling isn't there, you know, uh, likeness is so much about feeling. I mean, you could take a candid picture of somebody, it looks like them, or you could take a picture that's very, like, professional, and it looks nothing like them, because yeah. it's just, it just loses the impression, you know, or maybe it's, you know, edited too much, you know. Or it's it, not natural enough. Yeah, and, and the way people see themselves is completely different as the way someone else sees you, you know, so uh, that sort of thing. Um, a funny thing about... <laughs> Tell you a funny story about um, going back uh, with character. How I, I don't know if I ever told you about the job. How I got my job, it's scary. Uh, no, I don't think okay. so. Okay, this is kind of funny. Uh, so, you know, when I was in school, um, my first year at the American Academy of Art, uh, Gary came and he would try to recruit artists and stuff. And I showed him my work, and and um, he said, Yeah, 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 like. You told. I think you could do it. You know, you got a lot of potential. You, you can get a likeness. You know, uh, you know, just, just try to set something up. Well, at the time, my father just didn't allow me. Didn't want me to do it. He just still living at home and kind of like under his sort of reign. And uh, mm -hmm. the following year, um, I tried again, and I talked my dad into it, and he said, "All right." And so when I went to meet up with Gary, and it was like the start of the season, like pretty early on, maybe like March or April. I don't know when it was. So I drive all the way up to Gurney, and he checks me into the gate. He's like, where's your portfolio? I'm like, you didn't say to bring a portfolio. He's like, well, how are you going to show me what you do? I'm like, well, I figure if I can't draw a likeness in front of you, then I, shouldn't deserve, I don't deserve this job, right? And he's like, huh. And so <laughs> like uh, <laughs> me being who I am, I'm like, I'm going to just make it work. And yeah. so he's like, okay, well, here's Stallone. Draw him. You know, I'll come back in 10 minutes. That should be enough time. I'm like, all right. So I'm like sweating bullets, trying to draw Stallone. He comes back. That's pretty good. But the mouth sucks. I'm like, do I have the job? He's like, he's like, yeah, you got the job. I'm like, who the hell comes in here with no portfolio? I'm like, I don't know. I, this is what I told him. I'm like, 
<laughs> you know, if, if I can draw, I can do it. If I can't, well, then yeah. fine. I don't deserve it. Yeah, that's awesome. So <laughs> he was really like shocked. He's like, who the hell are you? I'm like, look, you know, my life is, my life depends on this. If I can't make it, then I don't deserve it. That's basically how I think. Yeah, no, that's, that's true. Do you have any, um, I mean, I'm sure you do, but I'd love to hear, and I'm sure people would love it. Can you tell, uh, is there any like crazy stories that happen at Great, at, at Great America? Just, you know, anything, one or two stories, anything that you like um, that comes to mind? So, so some of them are, I can't really share. <laughs> some mm. of them are very out there. Um, and, but usually, it, a lot of it's just a reaction uh, from customers. Uh, you know, I, I was pretty, pretty harsh with customers. I um, didn't really give them too much leeway <laughs> because I felt like, who are you to tell me how to do my job? You know, and you know, I've got my whole thing going right now, and uh, you know what I mean. So, but like, there are times where, um, one time, I mean, like, there's there's a lot of these cases where people stop you from drawing halfway through it, for instance. Uh, people get up in the middle of the drawing because the crowd behind them is like just, you know, le you know we, we would sit in a booth and the booth was like up to our shoulders and we don't see the crowd behind us, but the, the customer is on display basically. And, <laughs> you know, thousands of people, thousands of people are coming through there. So you're drawing one person and it's like a stockpile. Yeah. You know, when it's a good character, when, it, when you know it's good, you can tell, you can hear the crowd, you can... You can tell, you can see the, the person in front of me either loving it or getting really nervous or whatever the case, right? <laughs> but there are times where like, you know, I'm drawing like um, a 16 year old girl and her friend or whatever. You know, at that age, like you're going through, you know, like you've just went through puberty, you have braces, you're just awkward, weird looking, you know, 14, 15, let's say. And uh, I'm at a corner booth, so behind me and to the side of me. So people can look at me, people can watch over my shoulder this way, to the right of me and right behind me. One time, I'm drawing, I don't, I don't even get like halfway through it. I get to the part where I'm drawing the girl's nose and the mom like a T-Rex, just like How dare you draw her nose like that? And I just looked at her, I'm like, I'm like, well, I can see where she gets her nose from. And that's what I told her. And she was like, what? And I'm like, look, what do you want to do? Do you want to stop? Cause like I can tell you're you know you're 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 freaking out your daughter. She has no idea what this drawing looks like. Number one, you you know I know what you're doing. You're you're, you're pretty much telling her like it's no good. You're making faces and, and and you know behind my back. I can tell that. And now this is the last straw. So what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? She's like, can you have it redrawn? I'm like the drawing's not done yet. How about you let your daughter take a look at it? So I mean usually at that point when that happens. The, the, the parent has decided for their kid what's going to happen. They're not going to want yeah. it, you know? And so, like, I'm like, okay, can you please let me at least finish the drawing and so we can show them? Like, all right. And she just gets really salty and pissed and just walks away. And then when I finish it, I show it to him. Her friend giggles. And the girl who uh, her mom was talking about was her daughter, she's upset all of a sudden. But the thing is, we don't know if she would have been upset. We have no idea because, yeah. because the decision already made up for her, you know, by the mom. So being overly protective and stuff like that. I mean, I don't care. Like, I didn't care. It was, to me, it's, it's all good. Did it's you, all fun. Did you ever, um, I mean, I'm sure this the, happened the, too, but... The, the, okay, go ahead, sorry. I was going to say, did, did you ever um, draw someone that you, that they were coming across really, you know, like a confident person? Like, you're like, oh, this person's a fun person. Uh, I'm going to have fun with them. And then you show them and then oh, their okay. reaction is okay, just okay, the okay. opposite. Okay, okay, so listen. So, first oh. off, like, my, my second year, I was having a lot of rejections and Gary was like, look, because... So Gary was this older guy who's like wiser, more mature, and he's just harmless, right? But he would say the craziest things. Like if a couple sat down and, you know, just talking smack to the boyfriend, like how'd you end up with him, how'd you end up with her, and this and that, right? I was like, what, 24 at the time? You know, 20, I mean, mid, you know, early 20s. And so I'm trying to find a way to ease the blow, you know what I mean? <laughs> okay? So... It didn't really work because the guy comes in and I just start talking smack about the guy and just destroying him on the spot and, and saying how ugly he is basically because Gary would literally tell him what he's doing as he went. Like, oh, look at your nose and this and that. You know, <laughs> look at your ears, you know, whatever, yeah. teeth, whatever, right? And um, he would, I mean, he would just just have fun with it, right? I'm like, well, I, I can try that. 
Well, it didn't, didn't work. You know, it didn't, it didn't work. Talking to the customer was not my thing. I did not talk to the customers after that. Because <laughs> what happened, one, one time specifically, I remember, a guy sits down, and I'm looking, I'm like, oh, man. He had like this upper body, his teeth weren't straight, they were kind of like jaggedy. And I, mean, I almost thought I was seeing things, because he was like, like a zipper teeth, you know? <laughs> and he had a huge bony nose, like really insane like bone structure. His eyes were big and spiky hair, and his big ears were big, and his nose was long. And I mean, at that point, like you're at the middle of the summer, and your brain is just, everything is caricature to the, to the end. Yeah. And his girlfriend is like, you know, she was pretty cute, but I mean, cute relative to him you know so i i went along i was like man i can't remember what i said exactly but i did comment on his teeth i commented on his neck i commented on mm. his his ears on his nose on his eyes and and his girlfriend was laughing he was kind of like nervously laughing and i showed it to him <laughs> And he, they, they, they laughed at it nervously. So, and I'm just like, all right, cool. I hope this worked out. This is a good plan, right? Uh, 20 minutes later, the girlfriend comes by. She's like, excuse me. I'm like, I'm like, yes. And they're like, she's like, uh, you know, is there any way we get our money back? And I was like, oh my god, damn it. I'm like, why? What's wrong? It's like, you know, you really hurt his feelings. I'm like. I'm sorry, I wasn't trying to hurt his feelings, you know, I'm just trying to do my job. To so like, look, I don't mind the way I look, but he's really, he's like started crying over there. Oh my like, you really God. hurt his feelings. Like, <laughs> he's really self-conscious about his teeth and his nose and his ears, and you just like named, you listed all these things. I was like, oh man. I kind of felt like a jerk, but I didn't. I'm like, you do see the sign? I'm like, I'm like, yeah, but this is, I'm like, explain it. I'm like, listen, I'm sorry, I, it wasn't intended that way, but this is caricature, and I'm just kind of like, having fun and I figured you guys kind of understood this and that it's like yeah we did but I just didn't know you know you're going to start talking shit basically to us <laughs> and like you know <laughs> going off on it and I thought you were joking but you really did it I'm like well yeah that's, <laughs> that's what we do so they, they just thought that you were just busting their balls yeah, and they didn't realize that you're actually like drawing a bony nose yeah like and yeah I mean I can literally draw <laughs> that guy out of my head I remember it very clearly that's Long nice. neck. I even drew like the anatomy of the neck and the, and, and the Adam's apple and the yeah. trachea and the ears and it, you know and then his girlfriend right next to him. It just he it, you know and, and so I'm like, look, we don't offer returns once they're purchased. You have the option of rejecting on the spot, but if you like, you know, like I can have another artist draw you guys, etc. And they're like, okay, well, who do you recommend? And I was like, well, anyone except me, basically, right now. You know, so just. Take a look out there. If you want, like I suggest you window shop. And just take a look and see who you like. It's like, okay, okay. I'm like, look, I'm sorry about your boyfriend or whoever it is or whatever. Uh, but this is what we do. This is what I do. And she's like, no, it's okay. It's, you know, the drawing's good. It's just like you really hurt, really hurt his feelings. <laughs> so I kind of felt bad, but like, um, sorry, not sorry. I don't know. <laughs> so that was one. Uh, another instance was where like crowd pretty much is throw you know like uh metaphorically throwing eggs and tomatoes at the at the customer you know the person in front of me where i drew a girl she looked like a lemming you know <laughs> like i was experimenting at the time it's like eyes like stretching the pupils and the iris and everything so if someone's face is long just stretching everything in that direction so yeah um and just kind of like seeing almost uh just getting the feeling i don't know anyway like halfway through it she got up and she cursed at me. She literally cursed me. She's like, fuck you, I don't want this. I'm like, do you want to see it? She's like, no. And, and so she, she uh, it was just because of what the crowd uh, was Yes, doing. just because of the, what the oh crowd did. Oh my gosh, okay. So I still have the drawing. I, I think I still have the drawing. I don't know if, if I have it or not. I maybe gave it away. I gave away a lot of my drawings. And <laughs> she rejected it, didn't even see it, and then just walked away. <laughs> and I was like, okay, and everyone, you know, everyone's having a good time. Um, I remember uh, you and I once got kicked out of uh, Borders. We were in the cafe sketching people. Oh. And we were having too much fun. We were yeah. just doing little little doodles, sketches yeah. and doodles. And finally, the someone came, excuse me, um, you guys have to leave. We're like, yeah, what? Yeah. We're, ha we're just having a good time. Like, we, like, nobody, we weren't even showing anybody our drawings, but the people were uncomfortable, and I think they felt that we were drawing them or something. And we were laughing and stuff, yeah. but... We were just literally having coffee and sketching people, yeah. and they're like, "You guys got to go." Yeah. I'm sorry. There, 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 was, <laughs> there was one really notorious thing that 
for me at least um, I drew this was the instance where I drew like a cute couple like <coughs> 16 15 and they're I mean they were a cute couple I mean it's it's exaggerated but it's cute you know so it's a cute cute exaggeration mm -hmm. uh, I didn't think it was anything crazy or anything for me at least so the next couple that I sat down I knew it wasn't gonna go I knew it wasn't gonna go well um, <laughs> just you can just tell mm -hmm. so this couple had just gotten married they were on their honeymoon and you know, they're spending it at Six Flags, getting a, a caricature. As you do. Yeah. And so she sat down. <laughs> Let's just say, you know, she was a few times bigger than her husband. Uh, you know, it's kind of like how I described a shape <laughs> like that. And so, you know, instead of the paper being this way, it was turned that way. <laughs> and so I literally, the first line I drew was, you know, just, just, a, big just, just a big round curve. Curve, yeah. And then I drew the guy, and again, just the contrast. Um, you know, he's short and wide, he's tall and lanky, he's just hovering, because he's tall, way tall. And so, uh, you know, I drew him kind of hovering over her, and he had a nose that kind of hovered over, and his eye, you know, just perfect, um, perfect opportunity. I'm not gonna hold back. She had a shirt that was striped, so I drew the stripes like stretching across, stretching across, <laughs> stretching across. You know, it was like the scan lines, you know, like just stretched out. Uh, <laughs> and um, she, she looked like a frog, cost me a frog in Jabba the Hutt or something, I don't remember. But her face was stretched with that shape. You know, it's kind of like a... Yeah. <laughs> kind, you know, kind, of, kind, of like a kind of like a fish eye, you know, like you get that sort of distortion. Yeah. And he was just lanky and kind of like hovering. And uh, the whole time I said, the whole time, there was a huge crowd. This was huge, one of the biggest. And uh, I was apologizing to them, actually. I said, listen, just because I could see their faces. You could see them. Ex you could oh, see no. their expression. You could see them getting worried. You, you could <laughs> see them. So I'm trying to reassure them. It went from being excited to just like freaking out and shocked and like, what's going on? What's going You know, what's hap what, what is he doing to me? You know, and I'm like, listen, just remember, you guys, it's just a caricature, you know, having fun, this and that. I show it to him, I hold it up, as you normally would. And she's like, and she looks at me, she's like, no, no, that's not right. No, I don't want that. And the husband, like, he stays, and then her and her family just, like, run off. And um, he's like, he's like, I'm sorry, I, I don't think we can take that. Yeah, she's not happy. I'm like, it's okay, man, you don't, you don't have to buy it. You know, you don't, I'm not making you buy it, you know? And so that was that. And then everyone's like, dude, do you know them? I'm like, no, I don't know who they are. He's like, what? He's like, he's like, he's like, why did you draw them like that? I'm like, did you see them? <laughs> I mean, did you see them? He's like, man, that was awesome. You know, like that was great. That was amazing. You know, and so everyone's just like stockpiled on top of each other, just looking like hover. You can like it's a shadow being casted. You know, like they're like right here. And uh, yeah, like get off. I gotta draw this thing. And um, it's like crowd control. Oh, you know, yeah. and, and whatever. But <clears throat> what happened was, I'm like, okay, no problem. And I actually, I think I actually called Gary. No, Gary had called me. Five minutes later, there was a complaint. He's like, hey, did you just, he's like, hey, did you just draw a couple, one, you know, one that's, you know, kind of short and, you know, heavy set and guy's kind of lanky and this, <laughs> oh yeah, I did. He's like, was she wearing a striped shirt? It's like, yeah, it's kind of a striped shirt. He's like, yeah, they, they, they're, 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 they're basic. Did you make them buy it? I said, no, not at all. And like. Well, they're fine. They're trying to. They're complaining. I'm like, well, complaining about what? Well, they're not happy the way you drew it. I'm like, yeah, but they didn't buy it. It's like, well, what's wrong? It's like, well, it's, apparently she's traumatized. I'm like, well, like, what am I supposed to do? Like, get redrawn? I'm like, well, go to someone else. Mm. And so I was like, well, they're over here, and I think someone else is going to draw them or something like that. I'm like, Gary, I didn't make them buy it. So shortly after that, one of their family members, cousins, brothers, I don't know who was it. I had the drawing, like just in a pile next to us. And he's like, what's that drawing? I'm like, who are you? He's like, I was with that group and that's my sister, cousin, whatever, I don't know. I'm like, yeah, well, why? It's right here. He's like, we want that destroyed. I'm like, oh, you want it destroyed? Mm. I'm like, well, let me tell you something. Unless you buy it, you can't do anything with it. And by the way, it's not for sale. And by the way, I'm gonna pin it up here. <laughs> so I pinned it against the wall. I said, you want it? You can buy it. But it's not for sale. <laughs> and so he got oh, pissed, man. walked away, and I think security came and this and that. And I'm like, look, I ain't do nothing wrong. 
Yeah. Yeah, and that was one incident. There was other instances. There was instances where kids who you'd think would be totally cool and happy walks up to my jaw and rips it, crying. I'm like, what the hell, what did I do? Yeah. So, you know, it's stuff like that. I've had, I've had guys, big dudes. I remember one time, it was for Fright Fest. And it was me and my buddy Jesse and my other friend and Marcus, this guy named Marcus. He looked like, my, he looked like Mike Tyson. <laughs> and like, uh, this, I drew this couple and <clears throat> he's got this big pumpkin head and, <laughs> and uh, whatever. I mean, I'm, again, it's just having fun and, and the crowd's like, whoa, my God, look what you're doing this guy. You know, it doesn't, to me, it doesn't matter how big you are, how small you are. I don't care. Like, this is, this is what you signed up for, right? Yeah. That's well, it. Exactly. You know, you should know, right? And so uh, he, I show him the drawing. He's like, he's like, bro, bro. And he gets up. It's hovering around my table. I said, why are you drawing my head like a pump? Why are you, you drawing like that? <laughs> I'm like, because that's what you look like to me? And he's like, what are you trying to say, man? Huh? What are you trying to say? I'm 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 big. Yeah. I got a big pumpkin head. Am I a clown? Do I amuse well, you? Well, no, no. He he was he was he was threatening me, right? Yeah. He was getting pissed. I was like, oh man. So I look at my friend. I look I look at Marcus. It was like pin drops, silent. Everyone. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god. This is, we're gonna get into a fight. This is gonna be crazy. I can't believe this is about to happen. So I'm, I I stop draw. I I I look. I look at the guy. I kind of lean back a little bit. I'm ready for whatever. I'm waiting for something because he's like right next to me. And he's ah, bro, that's cool, man. I know we got a big ass pumpkin head. Yeah, I was just messing with you. I was like, yeah, you just saw like the crowd's reaction to you, buddy. I don't know about that. And you, you just, Jeez. it was really, you know, it was pretty intense. You know, I, I've had times <laughs> where like people uh, come by and randomly just push back my head after drawing. Who knows? Uh-huh. Just, just they, they really, it hurts. A drawing Dude, can hurt you. Well, I when I, um, I tried live theme park type drawing for one summer at Navy Pier. I just only did it one day a week uh, and I didn't really enjoy it very much. I mean, I had some fun, but I just realized it wasn't really my thing. I think it would have been better if I was able to hang out with you and actually draw every day. And uh, cause like Navy Pier was real dead. There was hardly anybody that would come through. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't as as much fun. Um, On the, on the days that were busy, it was a blast. Yeah. But um, I had someone, uh, uh, an older Jewish woman come up behind me um, when I was drawing, and I'll, it's just funny, it just reminded me when you said someone smacked your head. I, I was doing a drawing of somebody, and you know, I, I'm covered in tattoos, and this Jewish woman was very, very angry that I'm covered in tattoos. <laughs> and it's not her business, yeah. you know, but I'm drawing someone focusing, and she has, I don't even know this woman exists, and she was like, you know, in very traditional uh, clothing. And she walks up behind me while I'm drawing. She grabs the back of my arm and she just pinches and twists my arm. Oh my gosh. And I was like, what the hell? Like, it really hurt. And I, I'm like, I turn around and she goes, you'll never be buried in a Jewish cemetery. And then she starts and she walks away and I'm like, I'm not even Jewish. It doesn't matter. Like, what, <laughs> what just happened? It was crazy. I mean. People are crazy. Yeah, it's, yep. pretty, it's crazy. And, and you know, it's really funny too. Um, I so I had my own samples that I had, you know, when I I would hang up my artwork in front of my stand, and um, I had one that I did of Michael Jackson, mm-hmm. and um, it was the funniest thing because every African American person that walked by the booth, every time they saw they walk by, then every I mean literally all day long I would hear, oh hell no, <laughs> what'd you do to Michael? Yeah, <laughs> every single day. Um, people, they would, and then, like, and then, like, it, it, uh, if they wanted to get drawn, they'd be like, "You're not gonna make me look like Michael, are you?" And I'm no, like, "No, you, you don't, don't look like Michael. <laughs> you don't look like Michael. Michael did that to himself." <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so it's so funny, like interacting with people like that, where they, you know, they just assume, you know, that uh, most I, I would I'd be willing to bet most the people that sit down to get caricatures at like Great America or these different places have no idea, really what they're in for yeah well i, I you think know? i think most of them just want something non-descript maybe like, like when i used it's, to think it's about, a touristy thing like yeah I, when, when i used to think of characters like theme park characters especially it was like just cute sort of non-descript non non-offensive things that you'd get with like your girlfriend while you're there and you know the rides you know when it'd be really busy or like super crazy long just to get on a two-minute ride you wait like two hours so like 
it's a good thing to like spend some time you know um no one expects to take it that serious yeah you know no no one expects to run into someone like me really and just kind of like give them like in your face sort of stuff i guess you know and just ruin your day all of a sudden like just <laughs> crush your ego i guess you know but um you know after the fourth year of doing it and towards the end like i would just come not as much um you know at that point like we, had, we were like, considered veterans that's what we we're considered um, we had a good few artists who had their own thing and it, it, they kind of like complemented each other. Mm -hmm. I had my way of drawing, my friend Jesse had a way of drawing, Paul Rustan had a way of drawing, my friend Ed Raza, uh, and the, all, all of them went off to become great artists and successful what they do. So, um, you know, we just, we did our thing, you know. And this was before like it's on Instagram, there's nothing. You know, we did it, we had fun. We tell stories, you know, about what happened throughout the day, you know, um, hang out. That was it. Um. So, you know, it, what's what's really cool about all that stuff is that you know the the caricature thing, um, you know, it's it's obviously something that you love to do, and uh, you know you're really good at it. A lot of people are you know know you for that, but it's it's really funny. I, I mean, we've been we've been friends for a long time, and it's it, it's it's strange because I always hear people go on about, you know, Grigor's this, this caricature, this awesome caricature artist and everything, but I personally, as your friend, I don't ever think of you that way. I, I always think of you as this an amazing fine artist. And, and, and that's, that's where um, you, your work inspires me, your fine art inspires me, um, and you're, you're absolutely just amazing with pastels. Um, I've never seen anybody use pastels the way that you do. Um, your oil paintings are just amazing as well. Um, but what a lot of people don't understand probably is you also, like what, right now where we're sitting, this is your own school that you that you run and teach. Um, and you teach just amazing um, like master type techniques of, of drawing and painting from life. And you devote so much of your time to studying and learning. You, you continue to push and grow. You're not, it, it's it's like, Here's the thing. I'm ne I'm never ever shocked at something that you paint. Like other people see your work and they're like, "Holy shit! <laughs> oh my! How did you? Oh wow! That's a painting!" And see, nothing surprises me with you because <laughs> you work so hard, and that you're always working. I mean, you come to my daughter's uh, birthday party, and it was the coolest thing in the world. Like y there was a lot of people that you don't necessarily know. Some of them know you, but you you wanted to do a little painting for her for her mm -hmm. first birthday and so you sat out on my back porch and you did a, a little oil painting and it's awesome it's hanging in her room right now and you know no matter where we go you're always sketching you're always drawing we went to milwaukee a few years back and one of our friends got hurt some guy um smacked one of our friends <laughs> and we ended up having to take him to an emerg emergency room and you take out your pastels and start doing a little drawing and yeah stuff. that's right we yeah. were like we were there or for like five phone. in the morning or something oh, yeah like that. that's right or on my phone and, I was even drawing my and so too. i'm sitting next to you and you're just like start doing a drawing and pastel <laughs> drawing. so what i guess what i'm trying to say is um i'm not surprised i'm not shocked your work is beautiful it's amazing but it's it's not because you just are just naturally just awesome like you friggin work hard you love it you've got a passion for it and you really really push yourself um so um what i want to know and what, what i find interesting is when did this all start for you um when you were were you a little kid that was really passionate about the art or is it something that you just started getting in because i know that your family um I, like your your parents, I don't know if they were um, super supportive right away of what you were doing, nah. or maybe they were confused a little yeah. bit. Yeah. So so lo uh, little backstory. Uh, born overseas from Macedonia, came here when I was pretty young. Um, you know, ref you know, foreigners, refugees, immigrants. Um, you know, on the way here, the earliest things I can remember is, you know, taking flights airplane trips at one point somewhere in Europe I remember we stopped at a train station and I saw like like a locomotive set and I was so fascinated by it I, I didn't know what it was and I thought it was pretty cool you know and so when I came to the US 
that summer, I think I went to nursery school. I can't remember. It's kind of vague, right? But one of the first things I remember drawing was the thing that I wanted. And it was just like a train. And so that's what I drew. And I was hung up. But ever since then, I always was most talented. You know, like early on, my instructor, my teachers, my kindergarten teacher and my my, uh, we had like a man, I think someone helping us out in the beginning because we're foreigners. We didn't know the language, you know. So mm-hmm. there was a lot of pressure, you know. A lot of pressure as me as a kid, not learning the language. Uh, so we had like a, a caretaker for a little bit. And she kind of like helped me. She sort of like sort of nurtured that, I guess you can say. Mm-hmm. You know, everyone's, every, you know, all kids start drawing and stuff like that. They all start Legos and stuff. I just never gave it up, basically. And I kept it going. Uh, we moved a lot. So the one thing that always I think helped me cope with a lot of traveling and moving was drawing just getting a piece of paper and just drawing being able to draw something get being able to draw an idea and that always felt like home you know the first things I remember you know again being really poor as a kid um, and just watching cartoons is like well you know you had this little crayon set that was just beat up like eights you know and you got that like that Every once in a while you get like a 32 or a 24 and you got like the Grand Master Monarch edition of like the 64 with the sharpener. You're like, yeah. whoa, right? <laughs> I don't even know how to use A. What am I going to do with these 64, right? And so, you know, I used to take paper bags and just put them on a wall and draw them. Like, you know, I love Voltron. I still love Voltron. <laughs> so I would draw Voltron with these crayons, you know, and use the white for the, with the white part and all that stuff. And, you know, just as a kid growing up, wanting when I wanted something when I thought of something when I desired something it it was always like just a drawing away I guess you can say you know your imagination sets in Mm -hmm. and I was never into sports I was never into socializing it was it was difficult because we moved so much yeah you know we we lived in like the southern states we lived in North Carolina we moved there maybe three times we moved up to like New Jersey and stuff like that moved there a few times you know, by the time I'd get like settled in, we'd, we'd move. And, and just my father was just, he was a workaholic and he just always wanted more. He always wanted better. But, you know, it, it did take a, I think it took a toll on us emotionally, I think, as a kid. You know, it's, that's a lot of stress. Yeah. Uh, and I, I understand his intentions, but being Eastern European, it's like deal with it. You know, you just suck it up and deal with it. You know, you harden, harden up and just <laughs> deal with it. And that's pretty much been it. You know, growing up, you're like, you know, you got praised for drawing or, you know, you got praised by friends, praised by f- family members, praised by, like, friend, you know, all that stuff. But it wasn't until, like, I decided to go to college. That's when, like, you got to decide, are you going to take up this thing? Are you going to really, are you really serious about this? That's, you know, I, I was part, you know, how are you going to pay for school? How are you going to make this work? And yeah. I was like, well, I don't know. And at the time, you know, like family is a big thing. Family and from where I come from is a big thing. So it's just us. It's just like my brother, sister, mom, and dad. So we had a very small family here. Most of our family, all our family is overseas. So, you know, you want to help out. You want to help out your family. You want to help out your dad. You want to help out the business. You want to do that. So like I became part of a business. I, I did asbestos removal, asbestos and lead removal when I was 18. I did that for three years and that's how I paid uh, for school yeah and so you know I'll, I'll tell you this nothing makes you know what you want more uh, when you're when you're forced against when you're forced to do something you absolutely hate you don't know you hate it I mean you know you hate it but what I'm saying is you know that much more what you want so yeah it's as, as, as terrible as that job was breathing through a respirator like eight hours a day uh, one of the first jobs we did was we drove Every day, the Champagne Urbana from Chicago. Oh my gosh! It's like isn't it like a four-hour drive? It's about two hours. My dad. I mean, I don't know how we didn't get a ticket, but we drove there. I wake up at <coughs> four in the morning. I was eighteen year old. I was eighteen. Uh, you know, just it was for about three months. It was over the summer, so all the schools there in '96, the summer of '96. I remember they all had asbestos. They had, they had to get removed, and it was a big project, and it's one of the first jobs that we did that I did with my father and he's like if you want to pay for school you have to pay for it because I can't support you and you know he kind of doesn't believe in it he, yeah. he, really, he literally said I, I, like it's a hobby I don't I don't believe in it I don't know how you make a living you know it's just that mindset and I, I get it you know but 
it just made me further want to prove to myself, further prove to him, which doesn't even matter. I, I doubt that he even cares still. <laughs> yeah. But, but you know, it, it, like I said, if you want to know what you really want to do, do something you absolutely freaking hate, because that will set you exactly like, right away. You will, you will not take for granted those things, those moments. So like, after the one summer, and uh, I started late. I started in the f- spring, I think, of '97, and I could only afford one semester. Of schooling that's all I could save up so then I took a whole year off and I worked with my dad again and then I paid I, I just paid as I went yeah and it was tough it was really tough you know but that man that heart that really made me toughen up I remember first day of school coming there and I'm just like I'm all serious yeah <laughs> I'm all serious I'm like yes I can't wait you know my hands are calloused I'm tired you know I'm like yes this is gonna be amazing first thing I get to my fundamentals class I remember this kid, Bobby. I remember very clearly, Bobby. He was this like punk looking kid. I like his little haircut on the side. Uh, I found out he, he failed the semester before, the trimester or whatever it was. So he was put, put in another class because Popovich was too hard for him. Dale Popovich was too hard for him. So he gave her like an easier teacher, I guess. And the first thing he asks me, hey man, can I borrow a pencil? I'm like, where am I? I'm like, dude, you're in art school. Yeah. I busted my ass to even walk into this place. Yeah. And you're asking me for a pencil. I'm like, I looked at him and I said, did what you, did you? Did I'm you like, stab it in his hand? Well, dude, I was like, I was like, I looked at him so confused. I was like, where's yours, man? Yeah. And he looked at me like discouraged. I'm like, I gave him the hardest look. I'm like, are you out of your damn mind? Like, what are you doing here? Yeah. You know, and that was just a shock. I was so shocked. I was like, my gosh, is this, what is going on Unfortunately, here? that's the reality of, I think, a lot of art schools. Yeah. I mean, well, when, I I was, right away. when I was there, I, yeah. I remember there was a lot of kids that just didn't, you're, like, they were so blown away by, like, what me and, like, what Anthony Kosar were, were doing. Mm-hmm. And I remember, like, him and I talking, like, because him and I became friends instantly because we, we related with one another. We were working really, really hard, really wanted to be there. Um, and I was actually just talking with Jill Thompson about this. Um, she went to the academy as well. And I, I remember, like, um, a, one of the professors would be doing a demo, mm-hmm. um, like watercolor demo or whatever it was, and none of the kids are watching yeah. except for me. I'm the only one up there, like, watching, yeah. taking notes and paying attention. And, and, uh, and it's just... It's amazing to me, and, and it, it makes you realize oh, a lot of these kids, like their parents are paying for their college or yeah, whatever. Yeah, it doesn't set and, like the reality doesn't set in. Like you don't understand like yeah. what you're getting yourself into. And I, I had a one-year-old daughter at the time, and I was working professionally already. So to me, it was like this is important. I got, I, I, you know, I can't mess this up. You know, it's it's you know, I think that's really awesome though how you how you stated that because I mean that's true. Like, you know when you're not getting to do the thing you love but you have to do other things in order to do it it really makes you appreciate it when you can do it when, yeah and, when it, and it also either does two things it either makes you really want it or, or you're discouraged yeah. you know because uh, another ins- one start that I had there specifically that was like you know a huge influence was Algaminas and um, he was straight up just told students like you're not going to make it and so like <laughs> I was like shocked you know I was shocked how bold he was but I felt like at home because, again, that's kind of the upbringing I had. Yeah. You know, it's either black and white. You know, like the middle ground is confusing. Like the thing is, is like that, w- that should sort itself out, I think. Like he would just literally, he got into trouble. He got into a lot of trouble for this. But um, <laughs> I always tell the story here in class where he would come at the end of the year or the end of the semester handing out like applications for like McDonald's or Burger King. <laughs> he, would hang him out, he would hand them out to students who he knew like were just full of, full awesome. of crap. Full of crap. And he would be like, "Oh my god!" Or, or, or he, he would tell him like, "Listen, can you do this?" I love Hold that. Hold your hand out. He's like, "Do this. Can you do that?" And, <laughs> and he'd be like, "And with his uh, Ukrainian, you know Lithu- flip a burger? Lit- yeah, Lithuanian accent." He's like, "Good. You still have a chance. You can flip burgers." I was like, "What? The? <laughs> you can flip burgers? Yeah, you have. You still can get the job. That's you know, like so stuff awesome. like that." So like he 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 told us straight. And again, like your feelings don't matter here, man. Because this reality is like your parents are paying for it. If you were paying for it, you wouldn't even be busting your ass. You wouldn't be asking for a pencil. You wouldn't be late. You wouldn't be BSing. You wouldn't be taking like smoke breaks for like, you know, half the freaking yeah. class. And that's what people did. You know, that's what they did. You know, like it was crazy to me. And, and he was right. 
I mean, it was pretty kind of harsh and, you know, definitely couldn't fly today, but like he did them a favor. I think it's brilliant. I mean, that's that's just amazing. Yeah, and the, um, the look on their face was priceless. <laughs> I love that he <laughs> handed out McDonald's applications. Well, you know, yeah, and, and that is so perfect. It is, and uh, but the, <laughs> but but the thing is, again, it either either it sets you on the course of like, look, I'm gonna just buckle down and really do it and be serious, or I'm just gonna quit. You're right, you know. Um, one of the things that I love about. Uh, you as a person and and uh your and it, it it goes with along with your artwork is you've got you for someone that doesn't do drugs <laughs> you you've got a really fucked up mind like and i don't mean that in a bad way i mean you 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 have like these like for your fine art stuff you've got these really amazing just creative visual ideas um and stories and weird things and i remember um, a few years back, you were showing me sketches that now you've done like paintings uh, or you've started some uh, of, of these paintings. Um, and I'm like, what the hell is going on? It's amazing, <laughs> but it's disturbing and there's so much going on. And, and you're like, oh, yeah, this is a, a, a dream I had. And I'm like, yeah. you're, you're not on DMT. <laughs> like, I don't understand it. But but that's one of the things I love about your stuff is you you like, yeah, I, I dreamt this. Uh, and then and then, you know. I just had had to had to paint it, yeah. and it's just like the most craziest thing ever. Yeah. Um, when, like, what what drives me nuts about it is what I think is awesome is that a lot of the stuff you just like straight out of your head, you just start doing these paintings uh, with no reference. Uh, you know, you, you use some reference, but I mean, you just like start you know creating this atmosphere and this and the lighting and the, you know, and it's just it's it's brilliant and. Um, but I guess what I'm wondering is like when, in your in your from your perspective, when you're, when when let's just say whatever kind of dream it is that you had that inspired, what's the first thing that you do, when you when you start when you when you're excited like hey this is gonna be cool, um, yeah I, I, so, you know, a reaction to. Uh, um, when you um, you take a look out there at how much artwork there is and how many artists there are, uh, the one thing, and I learned early on through caricature, is that like you just have to be honest with yourself. And sometimes that's scary, right? Um, and sometimes people don't want to see it. Or sometimes it might af offend people or it might scare people or whatever. And um, it's funny because like, a lot of people will tell me like hey that's kind of like nightmarish and I'm just like I hate scary movies I can't watch scary movies I don't like nightmares <coughs> but anyway like a lot, a lot of wait the, you're saying you don't like? no I don't like scary movies oh. I don't like horror I don't like grotesque things I don't but like then you've got like all these things uh, you know I draw yeah. these crazy characters or whatever um, when a dream or you know like what you're saying a dream so yeah sometimes it could be a dream sometimes it's an experience Sometimes, a lot of times, it's just an interpretation. Sometimes it's just like, you know, um, whatever it might be. It could be a thought. It could be just like a daydream. Um, and now what I'm saying with the, with, there's so much art out there is that y you get tired of, you know, teaching. You do studies. And, you know, when I was a student, like, I was so excited. I was the first one to, like, be at my easel or first one I want to step the pose and and I'm not saying I don't feel that way anymore I'm saying that like after you see the millionth study and overall it's well done whatever you get tired of that and you have to ask yourself do I want to be the millionth and one <laughs> study the person who just just studies do I want to be the same thing mm -hmm. day in and day out what else can I add? What else can I contribute as an individual? Yeah. Okay? So, right. it, and it's very easy to just look at what's done and copy, emulate. It's very easy. It's very safe. It's very uh, uh, reassuring. It, it, you know, it's like, you don't, I don't want to do that. I, I don't want to do that. And um, I, I think the greatest thing you can do as an artist is it just, you have the opportunity to explore. You have the opportunity to sort of daydream. You have the opportunity to like sort of tap into like things that no one knows about you you know and like i said it can be scary and the way it comes off can be however way it is right 
uh, and we had the we if you have the ability to do a study, you obviously have the ability to take that study and compose it. Mm -hmm. You know, compose it in a way that tells a narrative, some kind of narrative. Because again, after seeing so much of the same stuff, and yeah. some people will do that forever. That's all and they do. It, and that that reminds me too of, of you know different art directors that I've talked to from from pretty big magazines where they have you know just just shooting the shit and talking has said how many you know s student portfolios they see uh where students just bring their portfolio straight from art school yeah and it's like we don't want to see yeah a fucking still life or a nude pose yeah. or it's like you have to if when you're if you're graduating from art school and you, you're wanting to get work out there you need to do a whole brand new portfolio yeah of your work yeah you're not i'm sorry but nobody wants to see your yeah, art school I, stuff i'm sorry you're not an artist yet yeah and nobody wants to see that no one wants to see um how you sh you sh you know shaded a sphere or, yeah. or yes, look, look yeah. at my perspective drawing no one gives a damn that that that, <laughs> that is like that is like the training wheels that is yeah. like the baseline yeah. if, if you can do a still life a figure a portrait guess what you shouldn't get merit for that i don't believe you should i believe that if you're going to be an artist that is like the bare minimal yeah but the thing is, people get praised for the bare minimum nowadays. They want credit for the bare minimum, and that's ridiculous. Hey, what do you think about Jackson Pollock? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say. It has its merits, you know? You know? Uh, oh, I just had to throw <laughs> that in there. <laughs> you know, like, but I mean, see, even that is, like, I'm not saying that I like or dislike Jackson Pollock. I'm saying that at least he's exploring something. You yeah. know, he's not showing... I mean, that, see, I'd rather there be a Jackson Pollock than another figure study. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. No, yeah, I agree with that. You know what I mean? For sure. You know, sure. whether you like it or not, that's a whole other story. But, like, yeah. diversity. You, like, you have so much opportunity to be creative. Yeah, you're going to do what the neighbor did because people like it or something like that, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I really do think you just need to kind of tap into, like, who you are as a person. Maybe you have some crazy traumatic experiences. And it's an opportunity to take that. You know, like we all have things that we want to hide and I think, or, or, or show or whatever, right? But as an artist, you have the opportunity to, to express that. Just a little bit of a narrative, just a little yeah. bit, just, just a tiny bit goes a long way, you know? And uh, that's all it takes to separate yourself, to, sh to, to show like, hey, this person has a little bit more creativity from the next one, you know? Mm. Uh, it, still lives even. You know, you can be very creative with still lives. You can be very creative, you can incorporate figures, you know? and. Um, I think someone asked me one of the messages was like questions like, do you use photo reference? Yes, I use photo references. I use everything. Uh, it's another thing. Like people need to get off their high horse. Yeah. I paint exclusively from life. <laughs> well, guess what? I do it all the time in the studio, all the time. Yeah. It doesn't. It doesn't make you a better. It. It is a craft. It. It is a skill that I think is should be there like the back of your hand, right? And what's nice about that is that if you can paint from life. And you can see the colors. So here, if you don't paint enough from life, you would never know to take your photo reference and to edit it. For yeah. instance, you would never know into, you know, like cameras are so good nowadays that you can adjust the colors to your liking. And that's a great tool. Now, when it comes to color, like, hey, if you can do an alla prima sketch of something and get a color impression, because it's your impression, um, use that, combine it. If you can draw it from life, so like I draw faster than I paint, draw it. So what I suggest is like if you don't have access to a good camera or if you're just if, if you're a Puritan, but you want to have a good way of like um, being economical, but not feel like you're cheating yourself, you know, traditionally, look, get really good at drawing, do tonal drawings, do a drawing, combine it with your study, you know, because your drawing is still like your impression, your interpretation, you know, yeah, for if sure. you take a photo, you're still going to interpret the photo. You know, I mean, unless you just want to be a factory, a man, like a, a Xerox printer, I don't see the point of that. And that's where like the yeah. the stigma of photography comes in. The photo is just a tool. Your brush is a tool. You know, what you do with it is a whole other ball game. And I think people need to just get off it. It's the same thing with with the whole digital versus traditional. When you know, the, when people give digital artists a hard time, um, you know, it's just, it's the same idea. It's like, you know, it, it's a tool. Yeah, it and, just, and, it's, yeah. And I, I use it all the time. Yeah, it's and it, and it, and we live in a day and age right now, which is awesome. Um, I mean, could I mean, could you imagine what Rembrandt would be doing today, or like if if they, you know what I mean, or these yeah. different past artists? Um, and I know you like a lot of the, like these like old like Russian artists and stuff. Um, but could you imagine like like 
it's amazing what they were doing then. Yeah. And the fact that we have, I always think about this with, with Norman Rockwell, um, how, you know, back when he was doing what he was doing, he, one of the funniest things that I thought he, I mean, I'm sure he did a lot of weird things, but, you know, he he had to pose everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, he had to have them sit there and yeah. paint them from life. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and a lot of times he would shoot photographs and then he would transfer his photographs onto the canvas and everything. But he would, you know, uh, like one time he I was reading in his book that he wrote, he actually nailed a duck, a live duck, to a piece of wood. Oh, my God. Through its it's uh, a little cruel, huh? But it, it but it does it's like there's like supposedly there's no feeling in the webbing, <laughs> but still he nailed a duck Gosh. down to and, you know. But my point is now you can just go on Google and say yeah. duck. You take and, it for granted, now. and you can find all this yeah. stuff. It's just amazing. Yeah. We definitely. Well, so I guess what I'm trying to say is there's kind of no excuse. No, there isn't. There's so much that we have. Um, if we can think about it, we can create it basically. Yeah. yeah you the, know. Yeah, and and at the end of the day, like. You know what? What do you want to do? Like, do, do you you want to praise yourself for being like this Puritan? You know, who paints with life only, or They're, or do you just want to just are, are those people create that, work? They're like, I make my own oil paint. <laughs> you can spend time. I mean, it's already made. It's all figured out for I you. Know. I mean, it just you just buy the colors you want and just paint with it. You know, yeah. I don't know. But it's th- fun. I guess I have no. I mean, fun. that's totally fine. It's I mean, all yeah. that is all that. There's merit just, to all that. It is that. funny though. There's merit to all that stuff. But yeah, you know, the thing is, is just. The, the the thing with creating work is that it takes time. Yeah, you know, there's there's a lot of effort that goes in, that that is involved. It's not just a matter of like put her up there. Well, yeah, and that, and that's a good that's a really good thing too that you just brought up too because uh, going back with just talking about your your personal type yeah. paintings um, is that you don't just you know and, and I brought it up because I, I I wanted you know you you did a good job of explaining it about it but. I, I I want people to understand just like your process. Like you don't, you don't just like like. There's like these pieces that you've been working on for a long time now that are just epic. Uh, these like pastel drawings that are just amazing. All these these human bodies that are just like forming and pulling together, and there's like sunflowers. It's just like <laughs> this insanely amazing complex idea. And they're just the studies for painting that you're gonna do. Yeah, and it's incredible. Yeah. you don't just like. You're spending so much time on them, and you're, they're just beautiful, and they're, they're they're pieces of amazing art just by themselves. Yeah, I can only imagine what the painting's yeah. going to be like. Yeah, so, you know, you know, um, what it takes to do something like that. It's just, you know, you have to, you have to really. I think um, a lot of it is like like it's like poetry. You can't really put into words. It, it doesn't really make sense when you try to explain it. But visually, it just sends a message or it, it, it amplifies a feeling. And look, that feeling or, or message may have been long gone, but you know, the, I, I enjoy the craft. Mm-hmm. I enjoy the craft of it. I enjoy having, uh, this is where like digital work and like traditional work where, you know, how I feel about it. Like, you know, at the end, I still really much enjoy just the, actu- the, the tangible like materials, you know? And the digital, like just like the digital imagery or the phot- photography or, uh, the digital sort of element is there again as a tool to help me because you know I have to compose it I have to come up with the idea I sketch it out I'm talking about the process you know it starts off something very simple and it just expands and sometimes it gets a little crazy so you, you, t- you dial it down you know mm-hmm. and you just take it from there and a lot of it is just kind of like a little exploration you, it's just a little journey it's, I think since, since this is not something for anyone but myself it's it's purely myself. It's 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 the most sincere thing I can do, really. And yeah. there's no one telling me, hey, there's a deadline. There's no one telling me I don't like it. Like I don't care if you like it or not. You know what I mean, you know I mean you know like it, it, I, I, or, or that's offensive or whatever. So you know all that is part of the process. Just enduring that, and then sometimes halfway through, you're just like, what am I doing? This is this is this is stupid, <laughs> you know. And again, it's part of it. All that is part of it. But like I, I think that is just part of the experience that you have as as an artist. You're left feeling vulnerable. You're left feeling unsure. You're left feeling like, do I, do I follow through with this? Do I stop? Do I put it, put it aside? And then I'm like anyone else. I get distracted. I'm like, oh, I'll do something new, you know. And that always feels great. But then like, it's like, hey, you gotta keep working on this guy, you know. You got this project you're doing. Yeah. Uh, but you know, that's another. That's the, that's just 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 part of the process, you know. Developing an idea, and it takes time. It takes effort, and it just doesn't happen. And, you know, you see, you, you may see the idea, you may see like an, an image, 
a few seconds, 10 seconds, a minute, but like, you know, it took my whole life yeah. to get to that point. It took, it took, you know, good and bad experiences to get that point, you know? It took a lot of like whining uh, um, moments well, to, it's, to get to that it's point. Well, it's important too, because I mean, it's like, it's like that saying, um, you know, practice doesn't make perfect, but perfect practice makes perfect. Yes. Like the more that you do put into your ideas and your studies, yep. um, you know, it's, it's like, like when I'm doing like a crazy quick deadline, um, when I only have like two days to do it, well, you don't have the luxury at that time to do a bunch of studies or sketches of the person that, that I have to draw or whatever. Yep. I have to, but I mean, it would be great. It would be mm -hmm. great if I could um, experiment with how much I exaggerate someone or how, or just, you know, but you don't have, you, you don't have that luxury. But when you're doing your own work, take, you can take all the time you want. Yep. It's not a competition, like how fast it's like, you know, how much, you know, you put into working on the idea, the process, the, com the composing, like working on something and realize, oh, hey, you know what, that doesn't quite work. Um, it's amazing, you know, like I love, you know who Jeremy Geds is? Yeah. Um, I got to, I got to talk to him on, on this whole podcast thing too, at some point, but I love when he shares his studies, like yeah. he'll share these small little oil studies. And I love that because it just, it's a good reminder that, hey, he doesn't just freaking do this crazy awesome yeah, painting people, yeah. <laughs> he does he does a practice he, he's trying to figure out his composition his lighting and and then from there he he takes it he, like to a whole nother level yeah and, yeah, and that's that's yeah. awesome yeah you people know? people i mean if you're doing this sort of thing you know it, it's it, you know everything that happens behind the scenes or whatever and you yeah. know and, and it's you, it, you might i might show those things later down the road or whatever but um the some of the things in the beginning I tried doing things strictly, you know, just, f I was trying to say, uh, I was experimenting with just working just from digital images. Like I did a sketch which is digital. Because yeah. at the time, um, you know, about 10 years ago, I started drawing storyboards. And not too many people know this, but I, I draw storyboards for a living. Yeah. And if it wasn't for that, I couldn't do a lot of the stuff. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't, I wouldn't have the freedom that I have, but that's another thing. What I'm trying to say is that at the time, it was one of my first experiences with digital work. And uh, I just love the idea that I can just like take a digital image, work on it digitally, have it as a reference, see it develop. And I'm like, wow, I actually want to turn this into something. Yeah. You know, because of what I often do, and I don't know how people do this. I do this. I just waste sketchbooks. I, I, I can't hold a sketchbook. I can't keep a sketchbook. I don't know how people can do it. You know, I'm very envious of that because my sketchbooks are just like random doodles and I get, I just don't like it and I just rip it out or keep it and, and, I, and my sketchbooks are terrible. My, my, my upkeep me of sketchbook is absolutely terrible. I am so envious. People like bust out their most skin. It's like beautiful elaborate <laughs> illustrations. I'm like, how do you do this? You know? So for me, you know, a lot of my thought goes, a lot of my thought process is in my sketchbook and all of it's broken. I realize as I sketch or think, I, I stop and go and I'll turn the page and you know a lot of time is wasted there but digital just the digital format is great because now it's like you know uh before it was just like i can work in my cintiq you know or i can work on like a tablet or whatever and it was a little limiting now you've got things like the ipad or wickham has their own sort of thing and um uh, it's amazing like you can just do full illustrations if you wanted you know like mm -hmm. there have been times where i thought man i should just go full on digital you know but a part of me just feels always the urge to just keep going back to like expressing in a traditional, yeah, uh, you know, expressing it traditionally, you know. But I do love the fact that like with the digital medium, you don't waste paper. You know, I don't waste a whole sketch with one idea. I would literally do that. Yeah. One sketch would just be one idea. You know, I'm just like rummaging through pages. I'm like, this yeah, and sucks. It, and it is, it's really freeing to be able to uh, to work digitally when you're working on ideas because, yeah, you you can just uh, you can just quickly kind of block in things. Yeah. Um, and you, you, what I like about it, if like, when I do my traditional stuff, um, I do I'll I'll plan things out digitally because I can work way faster and I can figure out what's working, what's not, so I don't waste that time on the canvas. Yeah. Um, exactly. So it's a great tool. Even even when I'm there's been times where I'm working on a painting, uh, I'll take a picture of it, and then go on on my Cintiq or whatever, and just mess with it a little bit to see, like what would happen if I did this. Yeah. And that's an awesome thing, uh, you know. In the past, what I used to do was uh, take acetate, and tape it onto the painting. Oh yeah. And literally create a layer and to see what I'd like. 
And this is this is something that was uh, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. So when when I was in school, my instructors we uh, uh, my instructors it was Michael Chelich. He is you know a great um, he was a he was a great instructor and you know it was pretty hard, you know he tried to be really hardcore and all this but I know he was a a softy. <laughs> But uh, he was very stern about composition, and that's part of the reason I think a lot of things uh, kind of got me thinking. Because he would say the same thing. He would say, "Listen, what what do you want? What do you want the work to be?" And there's so many just of these studies, and just so many of these boring. And I hate to say boring, but just like you see a lot of the same stuff. Like you should explore yourself. It doesn't matter really what avenue you want to explore it, but like you just want to think narratively, compositionally. You know, uh, he would say basically like, you know. I'm going off on a tangent here. But he would basically say, the work, your, your technical ability doesn't have to be the best. Mm -hmm. But your design, your sense of design, your sense of like uh, narrative f should complement that, you know? He's like, you have your idea and you have your technical ability. If your technical ability is like f short, if you're, if you're great at, at the idea, you know, then that definitely outweighs like say a whole... You know, something that's been done before, something that's comfortable, something that you've seen again and again and again. Yeah. You know, and I, I, I agree. You know, some some of my favorite paintings are not like these super rendered things or like what yeah. people might think I would like. You know, a lot of it's just unfinished looking or or mm -hmm. very just impressionistic in a sense. Um, you know, so that was a, that was a great that was a good experience because. You know, we d I definitely explore that sort of avenue of thinking, you know, and, and, and just kind of diving in personally to see what I, who I am, you know. But going back with the uh, acetate, what he would do is, back in the day, again, there was no digital work. So he'd bring our drawings in and he would put trace and paper and he would make corrections, make suggestions. And what we would do then is take our drawings or fully rendered, put acetate over that and paint on top of that. So it's kind of like layers in Photoshop. Yeah, and then when I was a student, when I was working in my still life, what he did is what he suggested suggested is look, just put a piece of acetate, and just you can paint this piece of fruit here or fabric and see what it looks like, because you didn't have that luxury. You had to sort of like guess what it would look like, or you had to like do a study, yeah. and that was a good experience. That was a good thing. So anyone that you know, again, wants to do that, you know, that's a good way to do it. You know, that's awesome. So. Um, so we've got a lot of, uh, well, not a lot, but we've got a few fan questions. So I think this okay. would be a good time just to look at uh, some questions. Um, and, um, and then we got to look at some awesome Grieger drawings that people did. <laughs> okay. I don't think, any, you've never seen one draw you before, right? Uh, yeah, there, <laughs> I've seen them, okay. you know. It's, uh, uh, so it's a question by Bern, Berned. I always, mm -hmm. I always get stumbled on your name. He's, he's a friend of mine, and I always say, it's, is it Berned? Oh, I think it's Berndt. 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 Erto. Um, he's awesome. He's a really cool guy. Um, he's a real cool dude, you know. Um, his question is: Do you? He he was asking if you knew the movie Before the Rain. I'm because uh, why? So, why? Something has to do with question. where you're from. Before the Rain is that? I have I know nothing about it, but that's that's what he has. I think he was wondering. <laughs> he's saying that's where I'm from, from that part of the world. He, from I guess it's Macedonian or something. Um, yeah, you know what? I do remember. I think the actor. I'm not sure if the actor is Macedonian. I think the actor. Oh, who's the guy who played? Uh, you remember Snatch, the Russian? Oh yeah. The sneaky. Yeah. Russian. Yeah. The guys with the beard. You know, I think that's the actor that plays it. Oh, I know okay. the movie. Uh, you know, I don't. I've been meaning to watch that. You know, I, I keep. <laughs> I forgot about that movie. But uh, I'm sorry, no, I have not watched him. I do know the movie. I know the actor. I think he's either, I think he's Serbian, actually. I'm not sure if he's Macedonian, though. So, but that's all part of former Yugoslavia. Um, this, this next question um, by uh, Garav is, I love the way you use color. Did you ever struggle understanding color? And how did you improve upon it? And what is the best practice to follow? Yes, I struggled with color. Um, when when I started, one of the f earliest, let me go back to the academy. Uh, at the, when I was at the academy, I did not, I, my ability to paint was very limiting. I had like one year of painting and I had like year of life drawing. I just went for two years. And halfway through it, I went to electronic design, which was a BS thing. I went to illustration, just another BS thing. 
And I just said, you know, screw it. I'm going to go back to fine art because I feel like I don't know how to paint. I don't know how to draw well. I could draw linearly. I was good. I, I, I felt like I was competent in like, being able to draw a line. I loved Muka and all that stuff. When it came to color, I just didn't know how to approach it. And so one of the first things I did was, uh, was pastel. I got myself a small set of pastels, Rembrandt. And Dr. Trapp was the instructor, and I would sit in. He always let people sit in. And so I sat in, and he was one of the first um, instructors that showed me how to approach it. And so some people with pastel, some people approach it where they draw on their side, like, like, like a tone. But he, he always had me approach it with line. So basically cross-hatching. So I would cross-hatch and, um, you know, cross-hatch colors. So basically I would just put in whatever colors I saw. Yeah. Like, you know, like it, it was strange because I, I would oversee, like for instance, if I look at a drape and it was red, I would, I would not see the red. It's kind of weird. You, you, you think, you, it's weird that I would say this, but I wouldn't see the red. I would see all the subtleties within the red first. Mm. Okay. So if I saw a red, I might see like purple or green or blue. And at the end, it may look like red, you know? So I was seeing all the sort of, uh, I guess you can say, the broken color, I guess you can say, or the colors that were part of the local color, you know, mm -hmm. or the subtlety. So like, I kind of like skipped ahead too far and I, had a, I did have a hard time. Um, it wasn't until um, a couple years later when I got into color. So I, I, was, I went to the American Academy for two years. I went to an atelier. It's called the School of Representation Art. It no longer exists. In my second year, you start doing color sketches. And one of the first things, one of the, one of the first things you realize is that after two years of black and white drawing and painting, that, you know, first off, you're drawing. Secondly, your value. Thirdly, um, your color. So once you understood, like, your value structure, you understood color. So color takes credit where value does all the hard work. Mm, yeah. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. So for you to get the right color, first off, it has to be the right value. Mm-hmm. And then from there, you know, there is a pro there's a kind of almost scientific process. You know, you think about, you think about the value. And you have to ask yourself, like, for instance, um, what, is the, what is the local color? Well, generally, if you were to ask a child, five-year-old kid, the colors, what is it? Without saying gray or brown, is it a red? Is it a blue? Is it a yellow? If you can't sort of translate that, if you can't, if, 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 if you yourself, um, I guess what I'm saying is, this tablecloth here, you know, some would say it's blue. Some would say it's gray. I say, without saying gray, what color do you see in it? Yeah. And you would say, this is blue. Obviously, this is bluer than this. But if you were to say by the eight, you know, c primary, secondary colors, what is it? You would say, this is blue. So basically, you get the value first. So basically, how dark is it? One to ten. How dark is it, right? Mm -hmm. This is white. This is somewhere in the middle. This is somewhere at the end, right? So it's a middle value that's bluish. Okay? Bluish, yeah. It's bluish. You got to ask yourself, is this blue leaning towards a warm blue? Is there, is there red in this blue? So you might ask yourself, is this blue more... I'm, doing, I'm, I'm teaching class right now. Is this, <laughs> is this blue more red? Or is it more on the green side? Is it more on the uh, purple side? Is it more on the, you know... Where is it leaning? Because this is so, this is more neutral, more mm -hmm. of a neutral blue. This mug and this color start influencing. Me. You start to see yellows in here. You start to yep. see more of the blues in here. Yep. Okay. So, neutral colors are definitely the hardest thing I think for people to see, because it's influenced by its surroundings. Mm -hmm. So you know, you very remember, fundamental. Remember that that one time when uh, you and I got in an argument about what color <laughs> the sky was. <laughs> <laughs> we were like back and uh, forth yeah. like yeah. no I'm telling you it's this. <laughs> we got serious too yeah so, 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 so for color you know I had a hard time because I was not seeing the apparent color first the most apparent color that you would see that you'd have to ask yourself and then from there you have to uh, you know think general to specific mm -hmm. so asking like what the subtle color is within the blue as a specific question so you want to think general to specific you want to think value first then you know ask yourself what the hue is. Mm -hmm. Then you ask yourself like what is the like what is the uh, intensity, the chroma. You know uh, how how intense is it? Is it is it re a really intense blue? So you'd say no, this is not an intense blue. This is a, a very neutral blue. 
which is leaning towards maybe the blue. Uh, to the, I'm sorry, leaning more towards the red or maybe towards the green. You know, it just depends. So yeah, that's my way. That's my take, and that's kind of like a no. Quick it's good. Um, so there's there's a lot of questions that I, we've already answered some of the stuff that you okay. know, talking. So I'm going to kind of skip a couple of them. Um, Lars. He, one of the things that he asked, which I thought I'm, it, I'd be curious to hear what you have to say about this, but uh, how do you advertise to get fine art painting and portrait work? Um, so, when I was a student, uh, how I supported myself was through portraits. Yeah, you were working at a mall, right? Yeah, I used to work out of a mall. And so, when I wasn't working at Six Flags, as a student, I was drawing portraits. I was drawing portraits from photos. I was drawing portraits from whatever. Your dog, your cat, <laughs> your squirrel. <laughs> whatever. I did it, you know, because uh, everything was just, you just needed income. And so I, I did that. I did that night and day. And that's how I made a living. You know, I, you know, I, I did all that stuff. And to me, um, I kind of got tired of it. I got very tired of it. And I do not... I don't advertise that I do that sort of thing. You know, people, you know, throughout the years, in the past 10 years, after starting storyboarding, and that's, like I said, that's how I make a lot of my income. And so it gives me the freedom to, like, not have to do that sort of stuff. I don't want to yeah, do that exactly. stuff. Because I'm taking something that I, I'm taking this sort of thing that I've spent my life studying. The last thing I want to do is do it for someone else. I, I, you know, and, and drawing storyboards and commercial work, you're already doing that. You know, in a sense, doing portraiture for someone else or doing a commission work, no matter what it is, you're working for someone else. I don't care if it's fine art, I don't care. It's still not your work. It is someone else's. It's not your it's not it's not on your own it's it's not your time, it's someone else's time that, that they're waiting on you. You know, it's a service that you're providing. So um, I don't seek that work and if I can avoid it, I actually do. <laughs> you know, because I'd rather spend time doing my own work. Yep. You know, I actually rather spend time teaching. I enjoy that a lot. You know, um, and hope that answers the question. No, it's good. Um, Mills Vanilles asks, "Who are your top three favorite artists of all time, and why? What's the best piece of advice you've been given? What advice would you give to someone that would like to be a professional fine artist? And what is your definition of success?" It's a lot of questions. That's fine. Let's um, start, let's, okay, let's, let's start. <laughs> we can go through them again. First so one. the first one was. Who are your top three favorite artists of all time and why? You know, uh, I don't know if it's top three. I know certain time periods or maybe types of art. Yeah. So the top of my head I can name is Gustav Doré, okay. Juan Mateco, Polish artist, amazing historical artist. Like, like he, he's so unknown. Um, and then Beksinski, uh, another Polish artist. Beksinski is probably... I mean, he, his work is freaking amazing. It's surreal, and it's like fantastic. And I think, I think Geiger even like commented saying he's like one of the most amazing, mm. you know, surreal artists there is. You know, growing up, I mean, growing up, I was influenced by like Dali. I loved Dali. I loved, um, you know, Frazada. I loved like a lot of the stuff that you'd see. You know, like oh, calendar Dali. Ooh. Yeah. You know, Frazetta, you know, like stuff like that, you, you know, and whatever was taught to you, it, it, you know, when you're in school, like, oh, our history, like, ugh, I'm so tired of this stuff. Yeah. You know, but like, <laughs> you, you, but, you know, it's very, I'm not going to lie if I didn't say like Bernini, Michelangelo, you know, a lot of the pre raphaelites you know, a lot of like the 19th century artists, uh, those guys will always be like that whole genre, you know, like Sargent, like all those guys, I mean, I love them, right? But I think most people do love them. Yeah. Most people do. Like it's undeniable. I think you know, um, but like I love Bixinski. I love Juan Mateco, and I love Gustave Doré. And Doré did when I was a student. Like all his figurative work, it was insane. All the all all, all sheer amount of work. You know the, he, how he illustrated like Paradise Lost and the Divine Comedy, just amazing. Like every time I wanted to have like a. Meaning that anytime I wanted sort of a push or an influence or, um, you know, something that kicks my ass, you know, that just go there. Just look at Juan Mateco. And he did some of the most insane historical paintings. Yeah. You know, uh, f about 10 years ago, they had a Leonardo da Vinci exhibit in Milwaukee. And uh, it was, I can't remember where in Poland it came from. 
Um, but it was that piece. It was the woman with the ferret, I think. It's a small painting, whatever. Everyone was excited to see it, but they also brought with them a few Mateco paintings. I was like, you know, no, nothing against Leonardo, and it's great, but man. I'm actually not a fan of Leonardo. You know, I, I like his drawings. Yes, I like his I, drawings I love his as well. Drawings. I, I, you know, but I, I think it's just. I've seen his paintings in person, and I don't really like them. Yeah. I don't think they're I, that. I don't really, I'm not, I'm the kind of different. Mike, Michelangelo, I, that's yeah. my favorite. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I love, I love, I love, I mean, like I out, said. Out of all the turtle artists. Uh, <laughs> Raphael, I like Raphael, too. Yeah, I, I like Raphael, yeah. too. So. But, you know, like, so when 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 they brought in um, the artists from that uh, museum, you know, when they brought his work with other artists, I really went there to see Mateko's work, you know, yeah. and I was just like, holy cow. I was blown away. And there, his books are really hard to find. I, and luckily, I have a few of them. Yeah. And they're falling apart. And again, I wouldn't have known of him had, had it not been for my, my you know, Algaminas from school. He, it was like his cherished book. Yeah. He showed me, he's like, look. He's like, uh, look at this guy. And he let me borrow it, you know. And I'm like, whoa, like, oh my God. Yeah, that's <laughs> you know? awesome. So him and, and then, and then <clears throat> uh, you know, Dore, Beksinski, Juan Mateo. There are some uh, artists, I can't think of their names now, but these are at the Milwaukee Art Museum. These, there's like this amazing like German section. Oh yeah, those are like, phenomenal. The paintings are just like I yeah. don't I don't know any of their names, but I, <laughs> every time I go there, I go straight to that section. Yeah, and that is the best section. They're here. so yeah. awesome, man. Yeah, and, and they're so small. Yeah, you know, and it's got so much character in it. You know, it's like it's like when I thought it's like I thought uh, Rockwell lived like later. It, Why it, it was like it it was it's way better than Rockwell. No, no, I, I know. It's but just, it's like it's but it's kind of. It's a little humorous. Yes. It's kind of illustrated. There's one with all the popes yeah. shaved and being shaved. Uh, you know? Got a bunch of guys like drinking wine. And yeah, yeah. It's, it's so it's great. good. Yeah. Uh, so her second question was, what was the best piece of advice that you've been given? You know, um, the best advice is really just... Um, it, it's not necessarily advice. It's It's more of just like... Um, what do I, how do I want to say how do I want to word this you know when you realize what you have to as you get older and even when I was younger like find what it is that you love if you're fortunate enough and just and just pour yourself into it because you know luckily I know I, a lot of my friends um, you know I don't want to say a lot of my friends, but I want to say it, you can't be half in, half out. You just can't do that. Yeah. You can't do that. You have to be in or you have to be out. There's no in between. I mean, that's fine. You can do whatever you want, but I'm saying if you want to be successful with yourself, you know what you're doing. You know, at the end of the day, what you did, you know, as you know, you know where you stand with yourself. So what I'm saying is when you find something you love, you just, you, you put everything into it because the reward, you know, is is as tough it may be or whatever. I mean, you'll forget about that, you know. But that's how you grow, and so I think don't if it scares you and you want to do it, do it. Like that's the best thing to do because then that's how you learn. How do you you know like um, it's not it's not like someone that gave me advice. It was like you have to just nurture this thing that you love. If you do not nurture it, you don't get anything back. You can't, you can't expect to get good or be successful or accomplish anything if you don't put the time into it. You know, the, the love you put into your work is really, the, you're just putting the work, you know, you're, you're pretty much... You're investing. You're investing yourself. Yeah. You're, you're nurturing yourself as an artist. You, you're, you're, you are nurturing yourself. And another thing is, like, nowadays you see a lot of... Uh, There's just one thing I, I would suggest, if I were to say anything... Be inspired. There's so much good work out there. There's so much. I, I didn't have this. You know, you'd have to go to Borders or something, or there's no internet. You know, I, I'd have to look at my art history books and, and be like, wow, look at that. Yeah. You know, pick up a magazine. Whoa, look at this. You know, uh, those that was inspiring. Now it's just like one click, my phone. There it is, right? And I think you take people take it for granted that back in the day, you couldn't do that. And I don't know who controlled what you saw also. Now, like, there's, there's Instagram. 
you know <laughs> there's tons there's Pinterest there's Instagram there's YouTube there's, there's all so these things much, there's yeah. so much right but be inspired but just take that sort of inspiration and don't let it overwhelm you because it can be very overwhelming and if you're just starting off just you know take it <laughs> one step at a time you know like and um, yeah I feel that way I'm like holy crap I'm getting my ass handed to me but like the thing is don't let that defeat you yeah. Just say, you know what? It's amazing that they're doing something. That is inspirational that they're doing something. It's inspirational that they managed to like pull this awesome drawing or, or this piece off, you know, or, or, or idea. Like that is amazing, you know. Use that to kick your ass in that way. Don't don't feel defeated because they did it. Pray, you know, that's that's something to be praised. You know, that that's there's someone actually doing something. Something that, man, I wish I could have thought of that. That's amazing, man. Only if I could have my own voice, you know. And I think that's what's important, you know. Don't copy. Don't emulate. I mean, you can emulate the technique maybe or whatever. I mean, you know, give or take, I think that happens. But you as an individual, uh, take the time to sort of like nurture who it is that you are. Yeah. You know? Um, For sure. But, but don't don't feel defeated. I, I, I think uh, a lot of people um, don't, you know, you look at your neighbor, praise them for where they're at. You're at your own level. And I think teaching helps me with that teaching has shown me that like everyone's at their own level yeah you know it's 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 friendly competition you should like you know if you see your peer is doing really well it's like man i need to get my shit together you know that's how it should be you shouldn't be like a sore loser and be like well yeah he had better opportunity than me or you or whatever <laughs> and, i mean that's just tough shit some that's just how it is for some people yeah you know some people don't have to work for a living okay uh, some people can stay home and paint all day some people you know whatever 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 it is but hey they have their own i'm sure they have their own problems you know and they have their own struggles you know but that's what sets you apart as an individual that's what sets you i think sets you apart as an artist you have your own story to tell you know like in, tell mm -hmm. it say it yeah explore it anyway, exactly that probably yeah. went too long <laughs> no right on that's that's awesome um I'm, re I'm reading through a lot of these questions and i realize okay. that we've covered almost everything already right so okay um there's just I'll just do one more question, um, and uh, it's by Charmaine, and I am I'm so sorry to say that last name. It's oh my De De Rocolaire. I have I, I I'm sorry, Charmaine. I'm pretty sure I fucked that up. Um, anyways, the question was personally, how well does your eye perceive color sub subtleties, uh, uh, and do you think it's an innate ability or trained with extensive practice? Yes, it's definitely practice um you have actually have some eye issues i do have eye issues actually yeah i'm uh, nearsighted and farsighted so my left eye is uh you know how they tell you don't stand too s close to the screen yeah well i stood too close to my drawing my my, my drawing and <laughs> so what happens is as as a kid uh your eyes are still developing and i was born with a dominant left eye and so I ha and because it's a dominant left eye i'm developing my nearsightedness so that overtook my as I, either I think my right eye was yeah so it's my so, so my left eye is more dominant it did all the work mm, yep. so my right eye which was farsighted didn't develop and so uh, I didn't know this I didn't even know this was possible but I have a, one eye is prescription is farsighted one eye is nearsighted my right eye isn't as developed so everything's kind of shifted to the left and when it comes to color uh, I'm doing it now if I look out my right eye, I see cooler, a little slightly cooler. Mm. If I look at my left eye, I see slightly warmer. And so it's a weird thing, but um, you know, going back to color. Oh, that's interesting. I see slightly warmer with my right eye, just slightly. Yeah. So I, I didn't know that was a thing until like I, you know, I was actually as a kid, I was told to wear a patch to like force my right eye to develop. Uh, I ain't doing that. I, I think, was you, never sh doing I think it. you should still wear a patch. That'd be pretty awesome. <laughs> well, it's like noise because, like you know, it's just the optic nerve isn't developed anymore, or, or whatever the science behind it is. But yeah, no, I, I know. I've I've seen yeah, people. I, do I think that now works. they give you eye drops so it blurs out the vision of one, forcing the other one to see. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, I've I've worn glasses the majority of my life, um, not knowing it until the age of eight, and I figured, <coughs> you know, that's just how it is. Things are far away. I can't see. You know, but with color. Uh, you can develop that and a good way to develop that is uh, pastels working with pastels because when people start drawing especially with me and a lot of places do this you start with graphite graphite is like universal you know it's a pencil or a pen or whatever and so mark making just making a mark is a very again universal it's just primitive sort of thing 
With pastel, it's a similar thing. If you get like pastel pencils or, 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 or just soft pastels or whatever, you can make a mark. With paint, you know, that requires a high level of dexterity. You have this clumsy thing, you have to see it, you have to mix it, then you gotta put it down. And there's a lot involved with that. But with pastels, like if, you, if your drawing is decent and you're good with values, with color and pastels, you can really um, explore that. Now, because I like to use very limited colors, um, a lot of the colors are very raw, or like more, I guess you can say, very primary-ish. You, know, mm -hmm. you know, like I don't, I don't like how they sell you like 100 variations of the yellow. Yeah. It was ridiculous because that, that doesn't make sense. That's just marketing. Um, you know, I usually paint with four colors anyway. Yeah. Uh, but with pastels, what happens is if you, if you, you react. So what I'm saying by that is with color, you see an object, you see it, and you don't have that color. It's like you don't have that color of the tube. Obviously, you don't have that color in the pastel form. So you have to develop it as you go. So as you're developing the piece on paper or whatever, you're, you're responding to it. So mm -hmm. you're adding color to it. You're, co you're mixing on the surface. So if you use a cross-hatching method, the colors interplay. They overlap. So it gives you like an impressionistic take on the color. Because no one, just like color, you don't squeeze, just like paint, you don't squeeze that color out. You got to mix it. Well, with pastel, what you do is you mix on the surface and you get that color. Some people blend. I don't do that. Yeah. I, I do it manually where you just keep cross-hatching until you get it. And it gives you that turning effect, that yeah. effect of being round. Yeah. And so some people, uh, some people, <laughs> some people say it's like psychedelic as I'm working on it because I'll see like greens and I'll see blues and I'll see yellows and they're just basically, it's just a process. That's what I'm seeing. And sometimes with color, you might overstate it. Don't be afraid to overstate the color because again, in that sense for me at least, uh, and again, color, I think, I think um, is very personal. It's your temperament, I think. Uh, I have I've had students and I have a good friend who's partially colorblind actually and you know the way to circumvent that is to make sure your drawing is correct even more so to make sure your values are correct and in, and you would never I you know it's funny because you would never think he was because yeah people who are not colorblind I would think they were because they're not seeing correctly yeah. they're not seeing color correctly so is it is is there an issue with your vision or is there an issue with just you seeing color mm -hmm. you know which one is it so a way to help with color and color development is use pastel because that you know you don't have to work you don't have to mix you don't have to do that you just lay it down and re you react you kind of react and you yeah. can actually push colors that's awesome um as long as you adhere to the value so so there's a couple more questions but um the end of that one was uh was basically what is your definition of success so that's an interesting question. Yeah. Um, again, I think it falls back on like, um, you know, being an instructor and seeing, uh, you know, going through school myself, being an instructor and sort of like seeing like what it takes, I guess is what I'm saying. And um, my idea of success is not like, it's, it's, it's you may have, um, here, let me start over. I was in school with some very talented people. Let's put it that way. When I say talented, I, I think about like the the typical idea of what talent is, right? They say, well, you just it's easy for you and you just do it, right? The thing is, is that I found that those people usually are the ones who kind of gave up first, because for whatever reason, either it's either it's innate to them or they just they just they can make it happen. The moment. And, and they, 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 they obviously do work towards it, but in a, in a sense that they're comfortable, right? And I've seen, uh, I know a handful of people who are still, you know, when I went to school with, who are actually successful in that sense, for when I was going to school with. It's because the people who like had it easy or, or who are really talented, who I was like a peer with, who I was like, you know, uh, I guess you can say, um, you know, developing with or competing with as a student, you know, like trying to like push each other, a lot of them just kind of stopped. Either, either because it was hard because, I get it, you have a family. Either it's hard because, man, I can't do this. Uh, I can't make money at it. Either it's hard because it's just it's difficult. Making art is difficult, you know? Yeah. Or, the, or their, their passion just kind of faded or whatever, whatever, whatever the instance, right? And then, you know, you run into people who you know, students who uh, 
they put in the time. They don't have it very easy. They work their butt off. It's usually those people who like who ha- who don't who it's not kind of handed to them for whatever reason. You know, their their life is kind of difficult or, or 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 whatever. I'm just using that as an example. It could be anything really. But people who, you know, against that sort of barrier that they're facing against, they just keep chipping away at it. They keep chipping away at it, and they don't give up. They don't give up. They just keep hitting it. And one day, you just you look at them, you're like, wow. Look at the work they're doing. You know, I see it all the time with students. Yeah. A lot of them like, there's no way I can do this. There's no way I can draw this cast. It's insane. How am I going to do this? I'm like, listen, it doesn't happen overnight, man. It doesn't happen. If it was that easy, you'd give it up. Yeah. You know, it you does not happen. You get bored or, or, or you don't see it as a challenge, you know. And there has to be just enough of, I think, that opposition that's not crippling you. But even if it is, you know, like, it, it you have to... You have to sort of see through it. And I guess what I'm saying is, for me, no matter what people say to you, you know, you know, like, for instance, like, people may not think you're the, <laughs> the greatest artist, or may, people may think you are the greatest artist. Either way, uh, one, you can't let one get to your head. Two, you can't let the people who are telling you that you suck or whatever, you can't let that get to your head. And I, and I hate to use the word suck, but what I'm saying, you can't be discouraged. Because if that's what you want, that's what you're putting yourself into, and you believe in it, your success, your your idea of success is not one that is defined by oh I'm a rock, a rock and roll star artist I'm I'm uh, yeah. you know I'm gonna be this guy you, no one may never know who you are and who cares really it doesn't really matter what matters is how you feel if you feel like you've achieved what you wanted to achieve and that it's something that happens I think on a daily basis it can span over months it can span over years. But I think you just have to remind yourself that this is what you love mm-hmm. and you're doing it and you feel good about it. That's success. Yeah. You know, that's success. Like, what else do you need? Like, everything else after that is just like people giving you praise or, or maybe, they, they, maybe they discourage you. Maybe your family discourages you. Maybe, who knows, you know? And it's, and it's really a, suge- a subjective thing. Yeah. I mean, I mean there, there are artists out there who I see getting praise all the time online and like the like, and I, and for me personally, I'm like I don't get what the hype is with this dude, but you know what? They're successful in their own way. Yeah. And you know, and 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 here's the other thing is I don't think it's a healthy thing to be looking um, to 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 have that kind of mentality where that's what's most important to you to like be looking at other artists and be like oh man I wish you could be like them yeah you know like what you said you know you you, you gotta you can you can be you and that's it you you yeah, only can you be you yeah. do what you do. And work on it. You got to be honest. You got to be really honest about yourself. If you want to grow as an artist and become better, you really do need to become uh, like honest about who you are and what you're doing. What you're doing, you know, yep. in order to improve. Yeah. Um, and and you know, like, like I said, like success. You know, again, yeah, that is a subjective thing. It's a very subjective sort of depends on what you what you want it to be. Like success could be like, hey, you know. I uh, I was able to like so for some people it's just like look as a student like I'm able to finish this task and I am so successful at that you know um, and that's just those are all just like little plateaus you know as a beginning art you know as a beginning as someone developing to become an artist you know um, you know again everyone is at a different stage yeah of what they consider success you know I could tell you t- I could tell you like yesterday I'm like well I wasn't successful I feel like crap <laughs> I didn't do what I wanted to do you know. But like, if I look at the broad scheme of things, I would say like, you know, I'm happy with where I'm at. I, I love what I do, you know, and I want to keep doing it for as long as I can. And I just want to keep going for that. Mm-hmm. You know, that's exactly. my idea of success. You know, and everyone I think can define their own. You know, but like, like I said, you know, when it comes to like uh, hard work, you know, you want to be successful, you have to you have to work hard. You know, and like I said people who have had it easy for whatever reason school is paid for or, or 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 it's just something that comes to them naturally that wears out really quick that really wears out really quick once you get into like the real world and you're outside of school you gotta bust your ass that were that's like 10 percent yeah everything else is like 90 percent is just working your ass off right for whatever it is you know for whatever it is you know and people don't understand that s- Success is a lot of hard work, a lot of hard work, you know. Uh, it doesn't just happen, 
You know, you want to be successful for whatever whatever that means to you, you got to put the effort into it. And you're definitely going to have to expect a lot of failures along the way. Um, oh, yeah. That's uh, that's part of being an artist. That's another thing. Yes. Learning how not to do things. Yeah. Well, also, like I was saying, yeah. people are going to oppose you. There's going to be a lot of ro- 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 blockades on the way. You know, that's, again, that's, again, going back to the, the person who had struggles in her life. You know, like, they, they're like, well, you know, I know how to deal with this, so I'm just going to chip away at it and make mm-hmm. it work you know um and i think that just that's just per, part of the person's character you know they're not they're not going to be stifled by anything you know whether it's income or family or whatever you have to keep your eye on what you want and mm-hmm. that is success i think i really do think that's success you know yeah, for sure um there was a couple people that felt that one particular thing was a very important question and a few people asked and so i'm I've got to ask you, um, what's your favorite Chicago pizza? <laughs> uh, I mean, I have my theory of your answer. Well, uh, lately, I would say I think your own pizza is your favorite because you make really good pizza. Um, you know, yeah. <laughs> Grieger actually makes really good a lot of things. He's very good at cooking. Very good. Um, <laughs> you know. Um, Homer and Pizza is one of my favorite. Gino Z's is really good. I like Gino Z's. Luma Mai's is good. Uh, I would say uh, Falco's Pizza on the South Side is pretty good. I love Falco's Pizzas. Uh, I, I love it all, really. Uh, it's really hard to mess up pizza, I think. But lately, I've been. I, I, it's been a while since I bought pizza. Yeah, I've been making my own pizza from scratch, dough and everything. So part of that question is part of the, part of your answer is correct. Uh, you, he makes amazing pizza. <laughs> um, you know, it's funny. One time. Uh, I, I, I was like, I think in Macomb, Illinois. It's like r- kind of in the middle of nowhere. And I went to this restaurant. It's supposed to be like a pizza restaurant. And it looked like a really kind of cool, like almost like mom pop type place. And like, oh, it's going to be like homemade type pizza. I mean, mm-hmm. it was so disgusting. I'm not even, this is no exaggeration. The sauce was like ketchup. It literally yeah. was like they put ketchup on the pizza. It was the worst it had a bite and we're like uh what is this yeah and, n- and nobody finished it was just uh, it was disgusting I, I uh actually made some mystery for class a lot of times uh i make food for students well so i bought pizza for students you know i bring pe- yeah, i do make oh, and you make you make cookies for them and everything yeah you're, you're the best teacher in the world <laughs> um so i have one question that's actually sent on um on audio okay and so i'm gonna play it so just listen carefully um i'm gonna try to put it to the microphone so that people can hear it so this is the last question, and then, th- then we're going to look at some fan art. Okay. Hi. I'm a big fan. Um, big fan of both of you. Maybe um, maybe a big fan of Jason's a little more. But um, <laughs> I have a question for uh, uh, Gregor Fidimov. Um, I, Gr- Gregor, I love your work. Um, just want to say that right out front. And I... Uh, I'm very impressed by your um, paintings and uh, the the use of a limited palette is um, uh, very impressive. Uh, w- w- the question, the question I so, sorry, the question I have for you is um, uh, when you're doing uh, self-portrait, um, uh, you're so you're so. Uh, well, you're, I mean, you're very attractive and your, your <laughs> eyes and your lips, I wonder what, uh, what palette might you use to paint your face? Uh, because, um, those lips, I might use, um, a lizard and crimson and, uh, then for your eyes, maybe, uh, white, um, added to this? a little, uh, cobalt, uh, or, or thalo blue. This? It's a hard decision because the, the your eyes um, are very piercing and um, oh, yeah. very attractive. And uh, so uh, when painting your self-portrait, uh, what limited palette do you prefer? I'm a big self-portrait. I'm a big fan. <laughs> I, I, I'll tell my name. I know, I know. Um, this is Joe Bloom. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan. Him. 
and I probably like, uh, well, a little bit bigger fan of Jason Saylor, but um, that's because I know Jason Saylor and he oh my sends God. me um, gifts. But uh, thank you, Gregor. Um, uh, that's, that, that, that's thank you. Uh, thank you. What a creepo. <laughs> what a uh, creep. <laughs> that was Joe Bloom. What a freaking creep. Uh. <laughs> oh my God. That's awesome. Um, he, he'd actually, <laughs> oh, punk ass. Oh, I was actually, I asked, I, I asked oh him God. to call in while we're doing it and I was going to have him talk actually, <laughs> but he sent a video instead oh or a recording. Wow. <clears throat> Man. Whew. That was awesome. That's, All right. So let's, let's, uh, look at some fan art. Oh um, my God. Got a lot of, oh a lot God. of people, um, that, uh, did drawings of you. I'm going to get the list here um and we'll start with the first one so um so yeah so this first one is by asmadi abdullah hmm. that's cool i like the colors yeah it's pretty uh it's pretty nice pretty bold mm -hmm. look at it there's like a little twinkle there mm -hmm. in the eyes like ooh la la <laughs> <laughs> There you go, Joe. That's how you do it. Oh, this yeah. one's cool. Yeah, I like this one a this lot. This is pretty cool. This one is by uh, Julio Caesar Warrens. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I like. Uh, I'm, I'm like, I'm like stunned. And look at the model. Look like I'm, <laughs> I'm like, like uh, just totally like in a daze. That's pretty cool. That's pretty yeah. cool, man. I like, I like the just the, nice. the interesting style, the colors mm -hmm. on the neck and everything's pretty cool. I look really thin there too. <laughs> My arms are so peony. Yeah. This one is by Fury Way. It looks like a watercolor or a gouache or something mm. like that. Um, it's. I gotta say, uh, the. I mean, it's 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 interesting when people don't quite know you. Yeah. Like they've never seen you in person. <clears throat> you know, because it's you know what's funny is that like like the eye color, the the yeah, type yeah, of yeah, size yeah, of yeah. the eyes and that stuff. Well it's funny because like like the the width of my body. Yeah. You know, I always feel like I'm like just like a a husky kind of guy. A, a, a <laughs> girth, whatever. Yeah. And uh there I just feel very You look like uh like uh you kinda you kinda look like uh um, an Italian uh, car mechanic or something like that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, so yeah. Anyways, uh, this next one is by Lars, Lars Eric Robinson. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. Lars. Yeah. Um, hold on a second. Um, okay. So th so that this one's by Lars. Mm -hmm. Um. And uh, yeah, it's interesting too. Mm -hmm. He's he, nicely lit. Yeah, very nice. This one's cool and kind of <laughs> creepy. I like it, but it almost looks like like you almost look. I think it's just because of the colors and everything. But you almost look like Mister Freeze or something. <clears throat> like it's funny because looks it looks like my eyes are like sinking, like my mouth and my this eyes. This is by Jonathan Groot, by the way. Sinking in. Yeah. Uh, no, it's pretty cool. I like the way it's done. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's interesting. It's an inter uh, interesting take. Um, <laughs> that's, my, that's my Juan Carlos Oh, Mel my God, it's hilarious. <laughs> this one's pretty funny. Your cheeks are just like... Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty funny, man. <laughs> it's such a creepy... It don't, the smile it almost looks like you're... It, 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 you know what it looks like? It almost looks like... Like the real you is behind there, and this is like a, a mask, mask that's yeah. like laid on top of your yeah, face. Yeah, that's pretty funny. <laughs> uh, this one is by Mark um, Hammermeister. Hmm. Hammermeister. That's a crazy last name, Mark. I love it. Um, Mark actually has a, a podcast that's pretty cool. Um, I forget what it's called right now. Otherwise, I would plug it. But you should check out Mark Hammermeister's podcast. It's pretty cool. That's pretty. Yeah, that's really well done. I think it's well done. Yeah. You look, you kind of look like you're pouting a little bit. Like the pizza didn't turn <laughs> out okay or something. Um, this one is by Ken Coogan. Mm -hmm. 
Look at that mouth. That yeah. mouth. The mouth is is pretty spot on there. Yeah. Joe would like that mouth. Yeah, Joe Joe Bloom would love that mouth. <laughs> <laughs> He'd want to paint it or kiss oh it or my something. Gosh. This is uh, by David Amyat. Mm-hmm. And uh, this one was interesting. He actually sent two versions. I, mm-hmm. I just showed the one, but he did it in graphite and mm-hmm. then did a digital color to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, this one, it, it these three, they were sent oh, separately, yeah. but I just made one image, are by uh, someone named Massimo. Um, I don't know what the first name is, so I apologize. But I thought they were they were interesting takes. Huh. There's a little bit. Of, there's a little bit of you. Um, in these two, I can, you yeah. know, this one, that not one, so yeah, much. Little, yeah, the eyes, are, the, the my eyes are really big in that one. Yeah, the first one reminds me of uh, my friend Mark Watrous a little bit. Um, but yeah, there's a, there's some, there's some, I don't know what's going on. Is that your chin? <laughs> yeah, it looks like my chin stick. Oh, yeah, I see. Yeah, like the smile. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> it's, it's my shirt or neck or something going, like, wrapping around. That's pretty cool. Yeah. It's definitely a very creative take on it, for sure. Um, it's weird. The, the one in the middle, it's it's weird. It's, it's always weird to me when people exaggerate that way where they explode one side of the face. Mm. And it's not that the human face is, isn't, I mean, it's not very, it's not symmetrical, but at the same time, it's like, what was happening? You know, it kind of, it's kind mm. of an interesting thing that, and I, I see that a lot with caricature stuff. But uh, I always think of it when I'm drawing, like the, the, the person... I always try to think of it like I want the person to look like you could take them mm-hmm. and turn them at any angle and it yeah, works. Like a, yeah, any, I like to think of it like a three-dimensional yeah, yeah. shape or object. Yeah. Uh, this next one is is by uh, Albert uh, Collado. Hmm. And it's, it, again, it's just like, it, it's like weird. It's like there's some, some things I can see, but... Yeah, in each one. It's like... Yeah. But like... It, it's strange, like, isn't it weird? Like, people have never, because some of these people probably never saw you before, so. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, it's interesting. Um, this one is by Matthew Matterson. Hmm. Wait. Yeah, Matthew Matterson. <laughs> I got, that eye, that, that, that eye is pretty, yeah, pretty that's, good. That's, yeah, it's good. That's a good one. So I would just say it, it, it's a little small, because you yeah. don't have, like, beady little eyes. But the the character is yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Definitely it's definitely there. Yeah. Um, this one is by um, Hakim Muslim hmm. or Muslim Muslim. I'm not sure exactly. Um, very interesting. Ava yeah. Ava loves this one. Yeah, it's nice. She was like, "Ooh, <laughs> I so, like sure. that one." Well, here you go, Joe. This is how you do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, this one is by um, Adita <laughs> Bajos. Oh, this is hilarious. It's kind of, <laughs> this is pretty funny. Yeah. This one, you look like you just farted or something. <laughs> and you're like, you're like, hey, guys, <laughs> it wasn't me. I didn't do it. <laughs> um, uh, this one is by Joe Hazley. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah, again, there's like. The just, bottom. Just the eye something is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The eyes are a little slightly off there, but yeah. Um, this one is that one's, that one's by Guy Bar- Barbosa. That one's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> this one, what I like about this one is definitely captured your, uh, what's the right word? Uh, like, sort of like your presence a little bit. Yeah. Just like you're kind of just. Like, yeah, that boom. one's a good one. That one, that one's a good one. Yeah. I like that one. Um, <laughs> oh my god! This is by Baron Dertel. <laughs> <laughs> Draw biatches. Oh my god! It's biatches. hilarious. It's so funny, and that of course is f- reference from the yeah. one we went to. Uh, yeah. We did a mustache bar crawl in Milwaukee, hmm. where our friend got punched in the face. Um, that one cracks me up. That one's hilarious. <laughs> that one's pretty funny. Man. Draw biatches. Um, this one is by Jency Fries. What's interesting about this one is it's it's like very gestural and it it's it's got like an you know a nice energy to it. Yep. Um, it just seems like very direct, just like bam. Um, this is this one's by uh, Michael Crotty. Hmm. Very intense. <coughs> yeah. That's intense uh, reference too. Um, this is by uh, Gaurav Chaudhary. And 
There, Joe. This, that's how you do it. This this one, this is probably the image that Joe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joe look, really look, likes. Look, Joe, look at that. Look at the. <laughs> <laughs> it's really in blue eyes, Joe. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's. I like the I like the the brushwork. It's fun. Got a little. Got some. Uh, uh, I don't know. You you look. You do kind of look like you're wearing lipstick a little bit. I usually do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this one's an actual oil, which is kind of cool. Hmm. Uh, this is Hunter Campbell. I like the. I like the how it's done. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> it's an interesting, uh, like you say, like a chrome magnum. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just, um, it's funny because like my forehead feels like it's sticking out farther than my mouth. Yeah. Or like, I always feel like this sticks out more. Yeah. Yeah, kind of like one, the one I drew, drew of you, I have like your, your face is just going like out that way. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, this is by Chuck Hatton. That one's cool. Yeah. I like the, like the, um, yeah, I, I just, I like the drawing. You know, yeah. The way it's drawn. Yeah, it's done well. It, it kind of reminds me of someone, and I can't think of who. Um, I don't know. It's weird. There's something about it. But yeah, it's drawn very well. <laughs> this one, this is <laughs> like your zoo, Zoolander. <laughs> okay. Like, uh, this one is, is by, uh, I, I believe this is Miguel Nola Mas. <laughs> You're like literally Zoolander, like. I know. There you go, Joe. Another one. You can put this one out. I got the black lung. <laughs> Ooh, that, that's like that's that's really awesome. <laughs> this one um, would be so so funny to like. Um, I don't know, just to uh, like. Like if you were like on like some dating site. Oh my God. <laughs> and that was that was what. <laughs> oh. I'm not sure if I get what I want with that. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> Dude, what's wrong with the neck? Yeah. <laughs> looks like a penis, man. You gotta. No. It totally looks like a penis. Oh my God. <laughs> this is my Andrew John. <laughs> this, this. <laughs> oh my God. Oh. Nice mushroom head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Um, this one is by Laurent Grassat. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I like the direction in in the background uh, and everything. There's like a nice energy. It's just kind of like boof. there's like a nice energy there. It's pretty cool. Of course, this is by our friend Jesse Navarrete. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Wow. <laughs> you know. I love it. So, backstory about Jesse. Yeah. Um, you know, he, we worked together. And so, he would always say, hey, you always look like a shark to me. Like, finding Nemo the shark. Yeah. It's like, it's like that's you, what you they. You look like Bruce. It's like, yeah, they're like, that's Bruce. what they see when you draw them. Yeah. It's just like this grin. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I thought he nailed it. Cause Dude. It, because it, you're, you're totally there. It still looks like a shark. And, you know, it's... <laughs> That's freaking awesome. And it somehow has, like, your, your little cap on it. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. That's a pretty good one. He... Yeah. Yep. That one's pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah no, dude, this is yeah. Got you, nailed your yeah. eyes. Like he's been waiting. Like, it's almost like he's been waiting forever just to do it. It's like I know the perfect one. Yeah, no, it's awesome. Dude, I love the it. Dimple, yeah, the dimples. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah. Yep. That's good. And uh, the last one is by Victor Gatmetian. I know I said that wrong, buddy. I'm so sorry. Gatmetian. Gatmetian. Hmm. Um. So that's the last one. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for everybody that submitted the, uh, the drawings. It's thank a lot you. of fun. Um, uh, and and uh, thank you, for Joe, for uh, helping us have a fun creep laugh there. Oh, creep! <laughs> so um, yeah, we this we've been talking for quite a while. I think we have we we covered a lot of awesome things. Um, and uh, it's so cool to to have you on this finally. Um, before we go, is there anything that uh, like 
anything coming up or anything that you want to promote or um, um, you know your Instagram or anything like that uh, just so people can follow you you know anyone that lives in Chicago I do have uh, I do offer classes during the week Monday through Thursday and um, I do have a Sunday class starting up as well um, that's pretty much it and it's ongoing so the Sunday class is you know a six session sort of deal three hours and the weekday class is ongoing and it's, it's pretty much a four year about a four year program and anyone that wants to learn how to draw or paint um, and you're just going to get a sample of what it's like you could take the Saturday like a Sunday class and the Sunday class entails either drawing or painting you know so a lot of people have requested painting for those who can't make it during the week um, but during the week yeah just I, I'm usually here just teaching and working my own stuff uh, that's, that's about it really you know um, trying to get personal things out there uh, I've kind of fell back on doing some more floral stuff you know, a break you know I haven't done them in a while so floral paintings and stuff like that and I have a lot of I have a lot of work that I don't talk about a lot of storyboarding stuff maybe I can like you know show some of that you know the final or whatever but yeah uh, give an idea like I don't you know caricatures is one thing the teaching is one thing and like some of the fine art stuff and the creative stuff is another thing and you know sometimes it's just like everything kind of leads towards um, everything kind of works together you know like one thing supports the other you know so yeah um, that's but, awesome that's about it that's really it. I don't I don't you know what else I, what else could I say um, I sometimes I get a lot of questions about um, caricature in the sense of like how I think I mean I don't, we didn't even touch about that but uh, they would, I don't get get my always get my brain sort of picked with that sort of deal yeah and you know first and foremost I want to make it very clear. Like, if I didn't have the fine art background, I don't think I would. I don't think I'd be successful in the caricatures. You know, like, uh, and and that doesn't mean rendering. That doesn't mean painting. That just that just means having like a an all round <coughs> sort of experience of like knowing how to draw, knowing how to paint, <coughs> knowing how to get a likeness. You know, so. You know, that that's part of yeah, it for if sure. I, if I if I didn't have that. I don't think I'd be comfortable doing what I did, you know. Um, and they work back and forth. Like, the characters definitely helped me doing the fine art stuff. Um, in a sense that, like, you know, it's intense. You know, it's very intensive. And you're, you're, you're in one spot for, like, 12 hours a day. And, and that's your job. You got to do it, you know. Mm -hmm. It builds stamina. You know, you have a lot of endurance, you know. Um, following through with things, you know, just that sort of thing goes long great lengths to get you know to be able to like do something that you really want um doing the character also helped with the you know in the fine art also in the sense that like when you see a figure or a portrait if you draw a portrait again like it's not just a it's just not not just a head you know you're you're also trying to capture the character of the person trying to capture the character of the the still life try to capture the character Oh, the shape, you know, you do a lot of like, you know, when, when I'm teaching, I, I talk a lot about shapes and characters of shapes. Like, what is its character? What is the character of edge? What is the character of like the light effect? What is the character of like the demeanor of something? Mm -hmm. Your first impression. Those, those, are all, those are all things I learned a lot from caricature. Now, another thing is that when I was going to school, before I went to school, what, before I went to an atelier, I, I actually, one of my dreams was to go to like Florence and study in Florence. Well, you know, not everyone can afford to do that. Yeah. Like, how was I going to be able to afford to live? How was I going to learn, the, you know, I got to learn the language. How am I going to put myself up? You know, how is this going to work? You know, like, I don't have this income to do that, you know? And so, also, I was kind of tied in with like business with my family and stuff like that. So, for better or for worse, I picked up a lot of skills along the way. I picked up caricature. I picked up airbrushing. I picked up storyboarding. You know, I started teaching. Um, I started doing digital work, you know, and I feel that, like, all that sort of helped so sort of become, you know, be, I guess, where I am right now. So Yeah. You know? No, it's awesome. No, it's great. 
And right. again, 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 you know, another thing, I never thought I'd be teaching. Oh, yeah, I never thought I'd be caricature. And yeah. here I am. So <laughs> yeah. talking about teaching, talking about caricature. <laughs> so it's kind of ironic. No, it's awesome. So. All right, man. Thanks right. so much for doing this. It was awesome. It was a pleasure. High five. High five. <laughs> <laughs>